Hey everyone. We are not live. We are not live, but it is the 13th. Um, the month. Yeah, and you know what that means? Yeah. Uh, my name is Wayne. And I'm Kyle. And this is Dead Air. Yeah. Um, all right. So we've got a very special guest this month. Very, very special. Yep. All the way <laughs> from the United Kingdom via well, Zoom, I guess. No. <laughs> no. Oh, right. Okay. Via Japan. <laughs> so you may know him as J Nightmares. Yeah. Um, well, you know, if, if if for some reason you you have been living under a rock uh, and don't know who Jane Atmaz is, um, you well, you probably have been living under a rock if you don't know who Jane Atmaz is. Jane Atmaz is a YouTuber from the United Kingdom who picks the most terrifying Japanese stories he can find online and translates them into English. These could be about the paranormal, but also stalkers, crazed exes, urban exploration, urban legends, and much, much more. Jay, welcome to the show. Thanks for wow. joining us, Jay. Thank you so much. It's a pleasure to be here. What a very nice introduction you gave me there. <laughs> Appreciate well, it. Well, you know, what we, we, to be fair, we can get it from your YouTube page. So. <laughs> <laughs> I recognized a couple of words there. <laughs> uh, how are you doing today, man? I'm doing good. Yeah, we've got a, it's a national holiday today, so I can't think oh. of a better way to spend it than talking about some scary stuff with you guys. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm quite sure that's that's um, that's kind of standard for Southeast Asians. That's how we celebrate every national holiday. Telling yeah, ghost yeah. stories. Telling ghost stories. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely, yeah. We're, we're a strange people, and we love it. <laughs> when, when you when you were uh, like basically going through uh, explaining like JNMS intro, right? I one like two words like popped up. Crazy X. I remember listening to an episode <laughs> uh, of a Crazy X of, of, he, of his show, right? Uh, about a Japanese woman like stalking this guy to the point mm. that he just broke. Like, yeah. she broke her. And that was terrifying. I've listened to some really scary stories, but that for me is one of the scariest stories that I've heard. See, when, when you started mm. that, I thought that sentence was going to go in a completely separate yeah. direction. <laughs> <laughs> um, I thought we were gonna break down and like start either confessing or relating something that happened to you. Oh no, so, no, no, yeah. no, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, no, I um, look, we can get into all that in a bit, but let's just start from the beginning, man. Um, we wanted to ask you how did your interest in what you call like we were gonna I I when we started writing the questions we were gonna go like oh how did your interest in in horror start but horror kind of it almost feels too much like supernatural. So how did your interest in the terrifying start? Oh, I like that. That's a nice choice of words there. Yeah. Um, I think when I was younger, my, I, the first thing I liked when I was young was like dinosaurs and stuff because they had scary teeth and claws. And then I kind of was into little goblins, little monster toys and all that. And mm. I just started to like scary things. And it was when my mum made me a tape of like scary songs. I don't know. They're like slightly kind of strange Western songs. I used to listen to them at night, getting a bit freaked out. And then I started reading scary books and then it sort of all developed into my entire personality somehow. <laughs> I, I have to ask. Yeah. What's okay. Some of them might be a bit obscure, but what's, What's an example of a scary song that your mom made you listen <laughs> <Yeah>. to? <laughs> well, um, when I was younger, there was a song called like the One-Eyed, One-Horned, Flying Purple People Eater. That was really weird because I just it was just about a monster that was flying around eating people. <laughs> and then uh, a little bit later, there's a song called Devil Gate Drive by Susie and the Banshees. And that's kind oh, of, yeah. that's pretty weird to hear when you're a kid. But the one that, that stuck with me was that Heathcliff song. Do you know um, Wuthering Heights by Kate Bush? Because yeah. yeah. it, it's about like a ghost outside your window trying to get in. And that was just, it, I would just think about that all the time in bed. Mm. <laughs> and then there was like some other strange David Bowie songs and things, you know. So yeah, I was well, listening to all these weird ones. That kind of does make sense. Because like I, I got into <laughs> Kate Bush a bit later. So it never occurred to me, like, I mean, you know what it's about, but it doesn't occur to you like how that kind of music could affect a kid. Yeah. Like, here's a song about ghosts. <laughs> yeah. And if you play it at night as well, and she's got quite a strange voice. So you're like, yeah. oh, no, stop. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. That's interesting. Like, yeah. Uh, wait, how old were you when your mom made um, your, your horror, horrifying mix? Thing? My horror mix, uh, probably about seven or six, something like that. Not oh. too old. Yeah. We start pretty young. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, we. 
we've we've said this before with previous guests, but we're starting to notice a pattern. Of, there, there is a pattern. <laughs> I, I I watched my first slasher film when I was six. Yeah, same. By accident, same my dad was playing it on the DVD, and I just walked into the room and I sat there and just watched it. The worst part yeah. was I watched it with my younger sister, and we both watched it together with my dad, and then he just he just let it happen. <laughs> <laughs> same with my parents. I was. Uh, <laughs> They had Chucky, you know, Child's Play, and nice. they were like, "Do you want to? Do you really want to watch this?" And I was like, "Yeah, I want to be like a big boy. I want to watch it." And I, I, I watched it. Then later that night, they had like the Chucky doll or something that looked like Chucky, nice. and they put it in my bed when I went to sleep. <laughs> so I it scared wow. the Hang hell on, out did, of me. Did they put it in your bed while you were asleep, or uh, no, as you like? They they said like right time to go to bed and then I'd get ready get my okay. pajamas on go into the room and then boom he's in the bed. <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah, they uh, terrorized me. <laughs> I, I gotta be honest, I I kind of really like your parents right now. <laughs> yeah, they, they, me they love their pranks. Well. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. wow, yeah, because like we we've as Kyle said like you know we all like watched horror stuff when we were kids and like you know that was that was thanks to. You know, dads who were like, "No, I think our kids can take it." Or in my case, yeah. my brother who just lied to me and told me like, "This horror movie is not, it's not terrible at all. It's not terrifying at all." What's it called? <laughs> the Exorcist. Oh, oh my okay. god. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Six. That's how I was when I watched The Exorcist. Oh um, wow. Yeah, but like, I mean, that's that's quite interesting as well. So it was because of your parents that you kind of just went off down there. So how did like once your parents started like letting you watch Chucky like a big boy. Um, <laughs> from there, like, what was your journey like? Before before you started um, J Nightmares, like, what other, what other oh, shows right. or books or... Horror stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Um, well, after that, I, I remember at school, everybody had their own sort of urban legend or ghost story to tell. Yeah. And I was always interested in finding stuff out. And then, you know, people would say, oh, we can do a Ouija board or, you know, somebody said they saw a ghost in the school and I'd be like, who said that? Let's go find them. And then I was always interested in trying to find out these little tales. And then that kind of developed into reading books like Goosebumps or, mm. you know, short stories and things. And yeah, watching G Goosebumps was on TV when I was younger. That's quite a, yeah. a big one. And I used to watch that all the time. But um, yeah, I, I don't know. It's always been there. When when I was about eight or so, I think mm. they we had to make an angel for a cr for our Christmas trees to take home to our parents. And my mum always likes to tell this story. She said, uh, "Out of all the kids in the class, uh, only my son had the angel with fangs." <laughs> <laughs> nice. Yeah. So it's always been bad. <laughs> Wow! Yeah, I, I, I love that. I love that your mom holds that as a point of pride as well. That's, that, <laughs> yeah. I, I'm telling sweet. you, man. Horror, I'm, horror, horror. Yeah, content. Just bringing families together. That's what it is. Yeah, it, it has this yeah. weird way of bringing family. Like I remember my first game ever as a kid. Like I was six or seven. Was Resident Evil? Oh my god! Oh yeah. man, the original Resident Evil. And I was like, it's like you can see limbs falling off, and stuff. even though it was really eight bit ish. But still, yeah. Kid, yeah, and the music, like, yeah. Yeah, Resident Evil's crazy. <laughs> so, stressful game for a young person. <laughs> very stressful well, game. <laughs> we just we just played through it as well, and like... Um, the remake. Resident yeah. Evil oh, remake. man, cool. And like, and he's playing the game, and I'm sitting there watching. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. you wouldn't be able to tell that I'm not playing the game because I'm just down there, like, I'm the one that's leading <laughs> forward. Like, I'm like this. I'm like, oh, God. And he's down there like, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Yeah, so, exactly. Yeah. Same. With, I, I'm just like you. Uh, like, yeah. my friend is so good at playing the games. I can only just watch him. I'm like, oh, God. I'm jumping at everything. Yeah, I, I, I think it reached a point in time where we're doing it. Like, once the camera shut, I just went, oh. Because <laughs> I was stressed. I was yeah. absolutely stressed out while he was playing it as well. And yeah. Oh God. Um, all right. So we, we, we've established where yeah. the, the, the nightmares portion of J Nightmares comes in. <laughs> how that got to be. Um, so let, I mean, let's talk a little bit about the channel itself. Like how did that come about? Yeah. Um, yeah. So I studied Japanese at university. Uh, right. Japanese studies and after graduation I went to live in Japan for about four and a half years and uh, after I moved back because I had a terrible 
thing that happened over there and i had to go basically like a stalker situation so i had to get out of there and uh also my brother just had his first child so i thought well it's a nice time to go back home maybe and then i was getting quite depressed with life back in the uk to be honest because i i'd worked so hard on japanese and i was just slowly forgetting words and sentence structures and all these different things and then um basically i thought well how can i keep it going whilst living in you know england mm. and i decided wow i remember all these creepy stories that people used to sit mention in japan i wonder if i can google some and find some and i found them and when i first started the channel it used to take me about a month to make a video because i was searching for the perfect perfect ones and uh, and sometimes i would give up if the stories were a bit long and it looked like mm. it would take a lot of time to translate but in in the end i i just kept going with it and it started to become more and more enjoyable when you can look for different themes for things and you know yeah it, it was just a, it started as a way to keep my japanese going mm. I, I love by the way that this entire channel of horror content that you have started as a language exercise <laughs> yeah you're just like oh let's let's keep this this other language that i learned let's keep it going and then yeah. it just resulted in the entity that is j nightmares yeah it, hey. it's it's really which, fun uh, which yeah. part of japan were you in um i lived in saitama Oh, okay. But I I went to university over there in Nagoya. All right, and uh, yeah. when was this again? Twenty. Uh, the first, I th think the first year abroad. The first time I ever went there was two thousand and nine for like right. five weeks, and then I went to, um, in uh, the university started I think twenty thirteen. So I would have been in Japan twenty fourteen or fifteen. And then after graduation, I went back in 2018 to, yeah, for a bit longer. Wow. Okay. Nice. So that, there's like, it, it happened. It, well, okay, I, I, I say it happened quite quickly, but like, it, it really does seem like the timeline just like from Japan to J Nightmares. That was wow. Yeah. 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 yeah it was good. Uh, I have to say, part of it was because I was unemployed when I first came back. <laughs> <laughs> so I had some time, <laughs> but um, then I, yeah, but well, I managed well, to get a job. We when we started Ghost Maps, both of us were freelancers as well, so we completely understand. Yeah. <laughs> the, the the having the having the additional time that um, a non full time work affords you allows you quite a bit of leniency yeah. to do stuff like this as well. Yeah, but yeah, but I, but I think what Jay did is perfectly like in alignment with all horror people yeah i feel like there's this thing about people who are in the horror community be, be it a creator or a consumer i think yeah uh, it brings you a certain kind of calm yeah it's like when i'm working on editing the podcast there's a certain calmness to it yes it's scary it's eerie but there's just something very calming about horror stories mm. i don't know like i i can't bring until this day uh, to this day i can't explain it but there's something very you know oh, that's it you. balances me out that, horror that, that's you i can't even write a i don't know Jay, like, that, 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 yeah does it do that for you yeah yeah i i like it um i always think that when you try and find stories you i just get quite excited like how's this gonna end or you know mm. what, what's gonna come next and yes yeah, it's, it's it is kind of relaxing mm. I guess a lot of people listen to it to go to sleep with as well, which yeah. I can't really understand. But yeah. Same, same. Yeah. yeah. They and do, our listeners do that as well. This, yeah, that's, that, is, that is so good. I, I can <laughs> barely even listen to it for, I, can, I can't even listen to our own podcast at night. <laughs> yeah. So, <you laughs> yeah, know, yeah. I, We've got some creepy ones I was listening the other day. Oh God, some yeah. really good ones. I mean, you say that, but like some of your stories have been like, those are the kind of stories where, and, I don't know how much of it is this are the stories themselves, how much of it is the production that you put into it as well, what magical combination of both it is. But like I when I listen to your stuff, it's it definitely falls into the category of I can't listen to this once the sun goes down. <laughs> That's cool. And yeah, and it's it's yeah. I think what's interesting as well is that because you've consciously gone, it's not just gonna be supernatural or paranormal stuff as well. It's it's just terrifying stories. And yeah, like, most of the time when it comes to like, you know, um, 
urban legend. Well, maybe not so much urban legends, but like, you know, the 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 stalkers and stuff like that. I would think to myself, no, I I should be okay with this at night. Um, <laughs> it's it's slightly different with yours, where mm. I, I I don't know what it is, but like I wanted to ask as well, like how do you sell? Because you like you were saying that you know you have to find that right story. Is that still the case for you? Or how do you, how do you select the stories? Um, yeah, I I go with believability. To be honest, I, I want to go with the ones that speak out. Like I, when I'm looking for them, I try to find um, parts where this person who's reading the story has a clear memory or or kind mm. of uh, if if I find it's easy to it's harder to lie when you can read descriptions and you know mm, yeah. it, if it was like it was summer i lived on the third floor of a building out mm. of the window on the third floor i could see this and then you know you can kind of build a picture like that if it's yeah. one like this happened when i was here then something happened then something happened it's not really yeah. as true and sometimes i believe they could be made up but that um the, that's kind of the reason i started the channel as well because when i was listening to some other stories i i kept hearing the same ones on other people's channels mm. and it's really cool because so many people can have a lot of stuff to read and they do their own little versions of things. But I, yeah. I started to notice that the language was kind of the same in um, mm. some of the Reddit stories. Like I, you know, I booked it because I saw a ghost and my heart felt like it was going to stop. It's sort of like the same few little things going round and round. Mm, so yeah. that's one thing I have with mine. I have a kind of luxury because I can choose what levels of fear I want to mm. uh, use. I can choose the words based on the translation so instead of like i was scared oh, instead of i was scared it would be like i was terrified or yeah. i was you know horror you know you can play around a tiny bit it's a little yeah. bit of creative license there yeah, yeah we actually employ the same technique yeah like it's the yeah, little so, details yeah. that matter like when you're choosing yeah. the stories or you're like vetting the you know the stories because we, we try our best as horror creators to bring real stories and yeah. when it's too fluid it's too structured you can tell that mm, this is fishy <laughs> <laughs> yeah yeah absolutely i was um listening to the one about the bayshore state the, the oh, other day that yeah. one is really creepy <laughs> and i can it painted a really good image of in my mind mm. Yeah, we we actually we glad. <laughs> yeah, we we know the person who who we, we are quite close with the person. Yeah. So oh, I, wow. I, will, yeah. I will pass on I will pass on what you said to that person cuz Oh yeah. great, yeah. What what's funny is that that person has told us before that they can't watch. They can't even watch Dead Air because they're terrified of these kind of things. No. So they wouldn't they wouldn't have seen what you they wouldn't have heard what you just said so I'll pass it on to them. No, that's um, great. Yeah, please do. Yeah. I mean like so you started the channel uh i'm blanking on the date so you started the channel 2018 right that's right yeah 2018. okay so since then like you started by finding the stories online have and you've gained quite the following since then yeah. what is considered really quickly quite the following like have people started submitting their stories to you as well um i do get sometimes people submit their stories but uh I wanted to do a, a viewer own submission, but mm. I've never had enough to do that. But I, I also haven't really put myself out there like, hey, please submit your stories. Because I know a lot of um, my fellow friends in the horror narrator kind of thing, they also, they also like to do it. So yeah, I, I'd, I'd like to one day. Maybe mm. I should be asking for that a bit more. How about you guys? Do you get um, sub story submissions? Definitely. Yeah. But oh, we don't cool. use them as often. We only use like maybe five yeah. out of our 70, 78 episodes. Simply because uh, I have, I mean, we'll get into that, but I yeah. have a lot of supernatural experiences. Cool. <laughs> Most of it comes from me or my family yeah. uh, or from his friends. And, you know, so it's mostly within our circle that we yeah. can actually yeah. verify because there's something about reading text and speaking to someone and looking them in the eye, yeah. you can tell whether the fear is real. It's easier. Yeah, yeah, yeah true. Yeah. It's probably a little bit like what you were saying as well, where it's reached a point in time you've seen so many of the stories where you can kind of tell the difference, like mm. that little bit of detail on there, of like what you were saying, like, oh, the th I was on the third floor and you look out and there was this one like weird looking tree. And yeah, then, yeah. And, then, and that's the moment where you go like, yeah, this person's not, this person's not, making this up or recycling a story because clearly this is 
somebody th- this genuinely happened to the guy if he's got like those very specific details and th- I think it's kind of the same for us where like Carl saying like you look at him in the eyes and then you you can't fake that fear absolutely yeah I believe that yeah yeah that's true um, I mean okay so I, I, I'm not purposely looking away from you I'm actually reading uh, questions. No, but I'm like, just um, looking over here at this beer I'm gonna have to uh have a little sip yeah. <laughs> I'll try to wanna... figure out how to do it with this mask on I was gonna say, Carl, do you want to join him? <laughs> He's doing it like the Mandalorian. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hang on. I if love I it. Switch this round. I can probably. Hey, whoop. Whoop. It's okay. We can cut that out. <laughs> <laughs> we can probably cut that out if you want to. I don't worry about it. They can have a little. <laughs> that's that's that'll do for now. Now I've got this uh, sort of set up so I can. Yeah. All right. All got right, my right, right. ease of access with beers. You don't have to we cut can, that. <laughs> we, we can start teasing people this episode and go find out what Jay Nightmare is. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, yeah, I'm sure like I'll face drop review, it again. I, I, I mean, I, I, if you want to do the face review on your channel, that's fine. You know? <laughs> yeah, like, not many people even ask me to for a face reveal, so I'm not that worried. <laughs> I, I mean, well, I, you, you mentioned something early on, like because we're talking about like how you structure your stories and everything. I'm very curious. And I, it, when it comes to the translation, how does that work for you? Because clearly your how much of it is you, because you mentioned like oh you can switch up switch it up where it's like oh I'm yeah. scared I was terrified so how how does that work for you how do you decide how how much you change when you translate the story itself? Um, it's it's always tricky when you want to change something so yeah. I would well, I would change the choice of words or sometimes the order of the words. Because uh, in Japanese, it's quite different to uh, English. It sometimes comes the other way around, so it's quite natural to change that anyway. Or you might want to omit a certain thing, take something out, and then put it mm. back a little later in the story if it makes it work a bit more as a flow. But mm. yeah, really, when I change these things, I, if there's something that just needs a little bit more attention to it, like the way they're feeling, let's say it was a short phrase in Japanese, maybe I could expand on it in English to try and give the same meaning, but a bit more of mm. a Englishness to it. I don't, I don't know, yeah. like a bit more, mm, mm, yeah. a bit more power. No, I, I completely understand. Cause it's, it's a, I guess it's a cultural thing as well. It's, I, and I think yeah. a lot of people don't think about that when it comes to translations. It's not just a direct, he said this and he said that, but it's like how much of that. So it's, it, do you face that quite a lot where not just in terms of the phrasing, but like culturally, like you said, you'll move something to later on in the story. And that's just the way that they would tell their story. And you kind of translate it into, uh, for English speaker on, it's a bit more familiar. With yeah. Story. Yeah, absolutely. I think it, it just flows more naturally. If we, if we want to slowly get to the horror, then we can, mm. if it, if we want it to jump right, right out, like the true experience shows, then we can do that too. But it's it mainly I I changed the words, which is it sounds bad, but I, I mainly change it so I don't end up saying the same kind of phrases, you know? Like I want it to be I don't want every story to sound the same. Yeah. <laughs> he was scared. Yeah. How do you feel in this situation? He was also scared. <laughs> it was very dark. <laughs> you know, it like was that. so yeah. dark. And yeah. what was it? Scary. <laughs> yeah. Um, but Absolutely. like we, I, I, I kind of, I kind of alluded to this as well, and we were talking about this before um, we even came on live as well. Um, it's not just translations; uh, it's not just translating it as well. It's, it's you. I like you're clearly the narrator of J Nightmares as well, right? You're not just yeah. like there's no secret other narrator that you're. Yeah, no, <laughs> just me. <laughs> but yeah, let's think like the narration and the production value that you put into each episode. Can you talk about that? Cause like w- that adds so much more to it. Like how do you decide even the kind of voice you want to have for the episode and the kind of music and yeah. how much in terms of sound design? Yeah, that's, that's tricky. Um, and that really just comes with, I guess a little bit of experience because some of my early ones, I had a really different sounding voice, I think. And uh, some of the music was not the, probably the best choices so it, when, when you do a few episodes of that you can sort of um learn to pick which mm. kind of music goes with the pace of the story another thing as well is because i've sat there for 
hours doing the translations, I know exactly how I'm going to say it before I'm going to say it. So in my head, I'm already thinking, okay, I'll do a pause here. And when I write the stories in the Word documents, I mm. sort of pace it out like that. Mm. And then, yeah, you could just hear it in your head as you're, I'm sure you guys know the same yeah. when you do a bit of translation work as well. You're like, yeah, I want it to be like that there and then a bit more there. <laughs> Nice. Yeah. So yeah. I've noticed that most of your episodes, especially the compilation ones, they have sound of rain. Yeah. Um, yeah. Is that a, like a is, what's what's the reasoning behind that decision? Um, I just find it really kind of relaxing. And then mm. I listened to the audience, and I thought, well, if these people are going to go to sleep, then maybe we'll just do a little something something in the background. <laughs> maybe I make them need the toilet at night time. But <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. But that's okay. So I also do um, campfire. That works quite well. A little yeah, crackling yeah. fire. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah, I, I love that. I love that. I I listen to your compilation when I cook. So oh, it's thanks, very man. relaxing, awesome. like, especially the rain ones. But yeah. there was one time when I remember it got a little bit too creepy, because <laughs> um, in Singapore we, we we get quite a bit of rain. So there was yeah. a tropical storm, not storm, like there was a thunderstorm. It was, yeah. And then adding on that with your voice, with the yeah. rain, it adds it to another level. I had, at one point I had to stop, I had to ha, pause, cool. and then I have to just take a look at the rain. It's like, oh, it's so dark, it's creepy. <laughs> it's like, see, that's the real testament that's of that. Like, if I can't listen to your stuff at night, that's one thing, but I'm a coward. So that's <laughs> like, you know, for him to have to stop it, that says quite a lot right there. Oh, um, thank you guys. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So, so I mean, speaking of stories, right? Like, you, I, I mean, aside from your time in Japan, like, but, like, is there something that is very specific about Japanese horror that attracts you? Um, yeah, I think so. Because one, I, I'm assuming kind of like you guys, maybe we're the same. After you watch a, I, I started watching lots of Western films from a younger age, Western horror films. So I kind of had enough of the slashers and all that. By the time I got to my teenage years, I wanted to yeah. watch something a bit more deeper, a bit like scarier. So I I found the ring, Ringu, and then I just <laughs> yeah, was yeah, like, yeah. okay, this is like my kind of thing. I'm, I'm a, one of these guys now, I guess. <laughs> so I just started <laughs> watching more and more Asian horror films. And I was like, wow, this is really good. But at the same time, I'm still watching, you know, the the Western horror films as well. But mm. there was something about language that really just spoke out to me from a young age. So I just mm. thought, horror, language, let's try and put one together. Which which country should we go for? Who, who likes horror the most? Uh, maybe Japan or Korea? Okay, we'll do Japan. <laughs> <laughs> so I did used to um, study Chinese a bit. And then it, I did yeah. used to like, <laughs> and I've been to Korea. So mm. it... Yeah, I guess I've always been kind of interested in in the Far East. Hmm. Yeah, I'm I'm gonna ask whether have you seen any Chinese horror films? Um, yeah, I've seen. I'm, it's I'm, difficult I'm to say. I'm also looking but, at Carl's face when when you yeah. this. I've seen some, I think, but not. It's difficult to say because I know that some of their films are not entirely shot there, or, or mm. sometimes in the West we might consider them to be Chinese, but they're actually either from Hong Kong or yeah. some someplace different. But I think they don't have as many as I I would you know usually be drawn to. Mm, yeah, I mean that's fair. Uh I mean it's not really a hot take, but I'm quite vocal about this. I think we haven't had like a good Chinese horror film for a long time. Yeah. I mean yeah. If we, we were to include uh Hong Kong Hong Kong horror film. Chinese right? language horror. Yeah, Hong, Hong hmm. Kong Hong Kong horror probably died in the 90s. Yes, yeah, kind of like, like, like Jap a, Japan yeah. as well. Hmm. Yeah. Hmm. Now 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 is the era of um uh Korean horror. Korean horror yeah. is big. Yeah. yeah. Uh but um Thai horror is slowly making a comeback. That's right, uh, yeah. Um, I mean Chinese horror Taiwanese horror, yeah, is is considered Chinese, right? Chinese yeah. Horror. So Ta Taiwanese horror, there are some that are almost that, dredging ooh. on the slasher Western yeah. kind of style to it, but there are ones that are pretty creepy. I can send you the link later. Oh, cool! Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, so, yeah, Taiwanese horror has a, a it has that Japanese element to it because they are very close neighbors. So I, I'm not surprised if like culturally they are like quite. Um, like 
affiliated in a sense, right? yeah. in terms of films and so on. Yeah, so I mean, just very quickly going back to when you said Ringu was one of the, it's it, it was one of it was a turning point for you as well. Like, what was what was it like when you first, because like coming from watching mostly Western horror and then making that switch to to uh, Japanese horror and and East Asian horror and then like what was that like for you once you started watching stuff like the Ringu? Um, it was just more. There was some parts of it I just couldn't understand, mm. and that to me was just more creepy. Like the, the the parts where you you watch the tape in in Ringu, and mm. you know you, you can't really decide if Sadako is going to be a bad spirit or if she's mm. done if she's been treated so badly in life she's become like evil, and uh, in, in her afterlife and stuff. So that we just didn't really. I didn't really have that before in in Western like ghost stories and films. Like I guess there's some similarities, but mm. to have a tape that you watch that can get you, you know, that can kill you in seven <laughs> days, that was like mind breaking. Yeah, <laughs> it's like wow, because that that's probably born of Japan's like uh, strange relationship with technology. You mm. know, they're very uh, kind of frightened of it as much as they are in awe of it. So they yeah. they love it and they are terrified of it. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I've never probably, thought of that. I think yeah, it probably comes from the the advances in the world war stuff. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. Actually, yeah. You made a really good point, Jay, because Japan has always been a, a to some sense technophobe. They have been technophobes to mm. some uh, degree, yeah, right? It's a weird like like. But then, if you look at that culturally, it affects the content. In a sense, mm. where it affects, it affects Japanese film. Yeah. For for um, I mean, Chinese based films, even in Singapore, because there's a huge population of Chinese here, uh, we always revolve around the idea of retribution because a lot of Chinese mm. they are Buddhist and mm. Buddhist. The concept of Buddhism is re- karma. Yeah. So a lot of the time, the ghosts come back to haunt yeah. the person. It's usually oh, you have wronged me <laughs> in yeah. my past life. I'm gonna haunt you till you die. And then it's like a vicious cycle. In fact, Thai films are also like that. It's there's a whole. I was gonna say, yeah, hmm. yeah. So yeah, actually, that's a really good. Yeah. Uh, see, you, once you get Carl start, start <laughs> started on like oh, the Thai oh, horror, that's oh, it. Oh. <laughs> we, cool. we may not be live anymore, but we we will go off on have, that. Have you, have you seen any <laughs> Thai horror films? Yeah, I saw Shutter. Of course. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah Shutter's one a good one. Um, yeah. I don't know if I've I've probably seen some others. I have to go through my IMDb. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's but yeah um we don't we don't really hear about it as much in yeah. well at least in england mm. but i know um shutter was a big one yeah, recently as well not not a thai one but the uh one on netflix incantation oh taiwanese that yeah. that was awesome that's the best like asian horror film i've seen for a long time i think that yeah. scared the hell out of me <laughs> yeah it's really strange right yeah it, it, it's a good it, one it, it does that. It's, it has that ring effect. You see, it's like yeah. It, it, you think of the curse. It, it yeah. inserts into your brain, and the way they shot it yeah, makes you feel it. that oh, it's like a YouTube video, right? It, it feels yeah. fake. But then, <laughs> all the strange little things they find in there as well, like all the tunnels. Oh, yeah, yeah. it's good stuff. I, here's a recommendation for you. Uh, there's a Thai film made by the same director from Shutter. It's called The Medium. It came out. Okay. Oh yes, the, the, the medium. Yeah. yeah. So it's shot in like a documentary format. Apparently, it was it was so terrifying. My dad actually texted me. I have this really really scary horror documentary. <laughs> and then really? he sent me he sent me the link. I was like, Dad, that's not that's not a documentary. That's a film. It's like, <laughs> like it felt so real. Like they had oh, CCTV yeah. footages and all. I was like, no 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 no, that's a film. <laughs> <laughs> cool. I'll try that one out. The medium. I like it. Yeah yeah. Awesome. Um. You know, segue a little bit here. So, since we're talking about like you know experiences in terms of of horror that you consume, horror movies, uh, horror stories, and everything like that, do yeah. you have any terrifying stories of your yeah, own? Here we go. Now, <laughs> guys, you you've been waiting for this. I, I'm sure the people who are listening and watching the videos. It doesn't outright have to be like I saw a ghost, but like yeah. anything weird happened to you, and this could be. Either or, or for both, preferably. Um, you I know, think anything Jay has the, saw before. Yeah, anything in the mm. UK, anything in Japan. Um, yeah, I've I've had a few things that's happened. Um, so, if I go with one from 
the UK when I was mm. when I was younger um, I used to look after my sister because my sister was born when I was 15 so when my parents were at work I'd often like look after my sister and uh, one time we moved into our new house and there was a there was a night I had to babysit my sister so I'm there quite young at home. I asked my parents if my friend could come over. He came over and then we were like, oh yeah, it's going to be a great night when she goes to sleep or whatever, we're going to have a party or whatever. And then um, we were trying to set up the TV in the living room to watch something. I can't remember, probably some Slipknot video or something. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then we found a channel on our TV that was kind of like a live feed of something oh, like a, hmm. and what it, at the time, um, our house had these like diamond shaped windows and it looked like some sort of camera was aimed at a window with a diamond shape on it. Oh. And it was really, really, really weird because we we panicked and we ran around the house thinking, oh my God, it's just me and you know my little baby sister. We're looking everywhere for this thing and all the way, it's, it's still on downstairs and I, we both saw like this head in front of the camera. Holy and we were like, what the hell? But we couldn't find it. It was, it looked like it was there, but it wasn't underneath our house as well. There was these two huge cables going into um, like a section of the ground underground. And mm -hmm. this is at my parents' house. It, it's an old like war. It was a house for a general back in, in the, you know, for 1940s or something like that. Yeah. So we believe that there was a kind of escape place or something should right. the war kick off so they the generals and everything could get underground and get out of there and my brother found these cables and he cut them off because we were so creeped out by them so there was i don't know if there was something going on like somebody had access to something down there but oh man it, it was really really creepy and we can't explain it holy crap Wait, so i hope was, it was just on a weird channel that looked so much like our house yeah, just accidentally what, was it <laughs> Did you guys manage to determine whether if it was your house? Yeah. It it's so hard to say because it was so close to the window, the camera pointing, and the you know, the screen's a little bit fuzzy as well. But it looked so much like the patterns on our kitchen window. Oh man. Yeah. Oh, so that that one really spooked me. <laughs> so so what did you guys do after that? I mean after he cut the cables. After he cut the cables, well, we it's really frustrating because me and my brother want so much to go down underneath our house and like dig up the kitchen basically so we can find out but you know what my parents say you know you can't do that guys you can't dig up our kitchen so well that's, yeah. a, that, that's a fair request <laughs> <laughs> maybe one day when they re remodel or something we can have a chance but there's portions of the kitchen floor which is like really hollow you can hear everything like oh, wow. as you just step over it and you're like there is something down there for some reason like some stairs or something i don't know there might be something good down there but it, it might it, not like, be it worked. Oh, yeah wow, yeah that's creepy <laughs> that i mean old houses right yeah yeah are, are they still living there yeah yeah but yeah still wow. there i'll be going there tomorrow <laughs> <laughs> well you know uh, if, if your parents asked two guys from southeast asia said yeah definitely <laughs> have the kitchen so you know if, if, yeah. it, if it gives you any sway it's like two guys from around the world were like you know you should hack up the kitchen just to find out I'll totally tell him. There, there, there was a video that i saw on tiktok it, i think went viral it, i think it was also based in the uk so this couple they bought a they did they basically hacked their kitchen and they found a well oh and yeah i saw that kitchen. you saw yeah. that video right it's and they've there. just got a well in their kitchen now. yeah it's, it's like yeah. Then you read the comments yep, yeah ring is gonna happen ring is gonna <laughs> yeah. happen oh, like just just wait just wait ring yeah. and they they actually made the well usable they kept yeah. they didn't yeah, they, seal it they why? kept it they can use it yeah um, fair it enough weird, i mm, yeah no yep that yeah um like did anything happen to your parents like since that yeah very very weird um yeah there's they my dad is not one for um believing much in like the supernatural or anything like that he's yeah. he's very much logic and stuff you know he's more scared of people than he is the supernatural mm -hmm. so but the first night we moved into that house that uh, he said at he woke up in the middle of the night and there was like three shadows at the foot of the bed like they were three little girls he said and he just 
he said he couldn't move he was lying there and he just said it's okay we're not going to do anything bad we're not going to do anything bad and then for the whole week of the first night looked really weird things were happening like the fire alarm was going off at two in the morning with no smoke there's like some noise like sounded like one of the radiators was going to explode the the door in our you know you could hear like the door making noises sometimes but the one that happened to me the most that scared the hell out of me was again my my sister when she was younger um she had this like toy camera and it had a couple of buttons and it would say little phrases like smile smile mm. and then the other one would be like say cheese or something yeah. still like that so she left that out in the garden i you know we're new into the house it's all this weird stuff's going on middle of the night i always sleep with my window open i hear in the garden this camera keep going smile 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 and i'm like what the hell and we don't know what what that was but it was going for so long i was thinking like is there some sort of pressure being ap applied to it by like an animal or like the mud or something i don't know i was trying to try my best please let it be like not something like a ghost who wants to take a picture of me <laughs> but yeah it was going it, like 10 times kept going it so i was like i was so scared i couldn't look out the window but i felt for sure somebody was in the in the garden playing with that <laughs> or something did you do anything i mean like did you go investigate um well i was i think i think i was about 16 and i was pretty scared of the camera mm -hmm. so i didn't do anything and it was about four in the morning so i'd left that one alone but i did tell uh my dad and my brother about it and my mum loves to torment me with it <laughs> she well, says so to she me put, sometimes smile she put the camera <laughs> Beside your bed, <laughs> like, <laughs> no. like the Chucky. To get away no, from the no. yeah. Oh god, it's probably what's coming next. Yeah. <laughs> oh man, I, it would it would be hilarious if after all this time you found out it was your mum at four yeah. in the morning just going oh, like smile. Yeah. <laughs> oh good. god, but but like, so so that all that happened, right? Is that yeah. is that the last thing that happened? Like creepy thing. Well, mm, they they always say something happens. Um, what there's another thing that when I was living in Japan, my parents had a clock in the kitchen that just said Japan time so that they could, uh, mm, right, call, yeah. you know, call me whenever. Yeah. Um, I think one, one night when they didn't hear from me or something, I must've been out doing karaoke or something <laughs> like, uh, they woke up and the clock had been smashed onto the kitchen floor which oh, is wow that made them kind of worry i don't know that's probably just an accident or something but also it happened with my little sister's picture as well smashed straight down it's like something's uh, going around our house smashing stuff up sometimes it's pretty creepy um my my sister also said she heard like someone laughing in our house really late at night and it was Ooh. that's pretty creepy and then there's one final one when i was on um webcam to one of my friends back in japan uh that I was home alone and uh, just chatting away, had the door, like that door behind me, um, open. And they said, oh, y your sister's in the house with you? I went, no. They they said they saw someone run past from the hallway to the other room. And I, I was like, I gotta get off this call, man. I'm getting out of the house. <laughs> I can't be in here right now. So I looked around, I looked around all the rooms. They, they couldn't see anything, but they said it was a small, like child or something so i assumed that in their head they assumed it was my sister but maybe it was one of them ones my dad saw one know. of the, the one of the three girls right yeah like, that's great no but like the door actually opened oh it was the door was open oh okay, okay like okay. just you could see the hallway behind and somebody so just someone, went from something like yeah. oh yeah man. i i know Weird. you're not in the same house now but now I can't take my eyes off the door behind. Uh, me. Yeah, I know something's gonna happen. <laughs> I, th God. I, I think Jay put that that yeah. shot that specifically <laughs> just I've to scare us. I <laughs> got some fishing fishing line here. I'm gonna make it open. <laughs> <laughs> wow! Just get like your neighbor to come in. It's like, um, I, I mean, like, why are they still staying? In the yeah, house? Like he's know. seen the three girls. Why? Yeah, I know. It's 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 very weird um yeah that it's it's a nice house i guess that's why and it's nearly mm -hmm. they've been there so long as nearly paid for so yeah, <laughs> maybe I, I, I guess like they, they they have made their peace with the spirits there yeah 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 they're uh i think they're they're getting along a bit better than they were so it's good <laughs> <laughs> well i guess it's like that room any kind of roommate 
Yeah. Um, yeah. So not, nothing like, I mean, not that we're, we're hoping for it, but nothing mm-hmm. dangerous has happened to your parents since then as well, right? Oh, no, not at all. Um, no, it's just little strange things. Yeah, we find things go missing in that house quite often. It's really weird. Oh, yeah. You know, all that sorts happens. of stuff like that. Then yeah. you will find it. You will find it somewhere else, right? Yeah. Or, yeah well, oh like I got given a cross when I was younger and we, mm. it was in my bedroom. I'm not a particularly religious person, but, you mm. know, my parents are a bit. And then it, it's like one of the most expensive things they ever bought, but they cannot find it anywhere. It's just like it's disappeared into thin air. I know I don't leave the house wearing it, so yeah. it's in the house, but we just can't find it. It's gone. Well, you know, it, it, probably it, underneath the kitchen. Nah, yeah, <laughs> we got to dig it up now. In, in the secret well that might be down there. <laughs> oh, as well. oh, maybe God. beside the, the cable that got cut. Oh, yeah. 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 Maybe they came in and took the cross and then yeah. nothing could protect me then. I mean, I was just yeah. going to say, at least it's missing and like you don't come back and it's like upside down. All yeah, that, 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 <laughs> that would have been like so messed up. Yeah. Okay. So, like, speaking of like, like, uh, like missing items, right? Can I tell you a story? Like, this is oh yeah, my please. own experience, Jay. Missing items. So, a couple of years ago, I was working on a documentary, uh, about uh, exhumation uh, of a large cemetery in Singapore. Uh, Singapore is a fairly young nation, about 50, 57, 58 years old. So, uh, we had like a cemetery that that has about hundred thousand tombs. Uh, mostly Chinese tombs so they had because Singapore is very very small so they had to clear that place to build to extend the military base so basically they, they cleared a lot of the tombs um, and I was working on a documentary about the exhumation process so you can see like people digging up the coffins after 20-30 years the remains the skeleton uh, and I specifically asked a uh, uh, feng shui master to basically say oh can I do this documentary <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not at that point I'm not much of a believer and I've started working on ghost maps I'm like ah, I'm a horror creator and yeah, yeah. whatever right like and uh, the, basically the feng shui master said oh yeah you should go there and do a small ritual and, and ask for permission and then the filmmaker in me I had a crew so I had like two people that I'm paying to be there so I was like cool. if I go there and ask for permission on the actual day of the shoot and if it says no I'm going to pay them for nothing uh, so I decided to not ask them. Oh no, <laughs> dangerous man! Yeah, it's very dangerous. Start of a horror film, this is. Yes, so so there were quite a few things that happened that I cannot talk about because it's very personal. But Whoa. what I can talk about is one of the shoots that I went on. I went to the cemetery on top of the cemetery. It's like a small hill, so on top of the cemetery you can see the entire cemetery. So I was doing time lapse at about four five a.m. I had a camera guy with me, so he parked. We parked his car. And we had like equipment, right? So I took out my equipment and I was setting out the cameras. I put uh, a small LED light. In fact, it's the very same LED light. Is this LED? Oh, light. okay. So, so it was just to shine light because it's very dark. I put it on the the camera back. I turned my back. I walked like less than five meters to set up the camera. I turned back. the The light was gone. Wow. The light was missing. Yeah, like that. And it's a cemetery. There's nobody but us Nobody on that. top of the hill. Oh, and man. my camera guy is further away. He's like 15 meters away. And then I walked to him. I said, did you touch my light? He said, no, I'm, I've been here for the whole time. He's like, okay. And I said, I Ooh. guess they don't like us here. And he's like, what do you mean they don't like us? He, he's like a, he used to be a, a very staunch Catholic, but he has turned 80 since then. So he doesn't right. believe. And he's like, uh, oh, okay. <laughs> he thought <laughs> I was weird for making that statement. And then after that, when, when the sun rose, like at 6 a.m., we could where, where there was light, right? I found the light underneath the camera bag, and I swear mm. to God, the camera bag is wow. about ten kg heavy. How did the light get underneath the camera? Oh, bag? No way! For no reason, and in the dark, that would have not. Now I was like, oh my God, this is so creepy. But in my mind, I'm like, okay, that that that's it has the beginnings of a horror story yeah, episode yeah. for my podcast. <laughs> yeah. God, that would have been horrible. Yeah, that would have stressed me out. Yeah. Cemetery as well. God. Oh God. <laughs> like, I, I, I can't remember whether we've told the story before, but it, it, this isn't like a scary story, but like in that, it, it's the same cemetery, right? Yeah. Yeah. So uh, we had gone <laughs> to that same cemetery, like I think this was quite a number of years after, and we were looking like, you know, for, for just 
I, I can't remember what we were even doing. No, we were, we were doing some, uh, like, we were shooting some visuals. Yeah. yeah. And um, and we weren't there, like, past sundown. We were there, like, we were close. there until close. close to sundown. So we were yeah. there until, like, 6 p.m. Yeah. Um, and we called we called the ride. No, no, no. We were there until sundown. Actually, we we were. Oh, yeah. We, we oh, left wow. around sundown. We left. We, we, we lingered around. Because the cemetery, there's like a long road, right? Yeah. Where you can, mm. like, there's a bus. You can take a bus. It's still creepy. Yeah. And yeah. opposite the long road is like, uh, at the other end is the military base. So you still have light. You, you still have some yeah. s- some sense of civilization. Yeah. So, but nobody will try to get a car from that road because everybody knows it's a cemetery. You yeah. try to avoid it. And you don't pick up ca- passengers in cemeteries. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Right? So we called for an Uber. <laughs> okay, you can continue the story. Yeah, and the guy shows up, and you can see like as he's driving towards us, he he looks kind of like this, like, yeah, mm, what's going on here? Yeah, yeah and, and we get we get into the car, and like he's like, oh hey, he's like all normal, and, everything. <laughs> and as we're driving off, Kyle obviously senses the tension in the guy, and he's like, you didn't want to pick us up, did you? <laughs> and the guy's like. I didn't know whether to accept the ride or not. <laughs> and even as I was driving here, I was like, I was, those aren't the guys I'm supposed to pick up, right? Can anybody else see them? Or am I just the only one that can yeah. see them? And, and Kyle just, like, if I remember right, Kyle just made it even worse for himself. Like, so the guy was like, ah, ha, ha. well, I guess you guys are real. And then Kyle goes, are we? Oh, no, I, did, I, I did not say are we. I say what makes you think, what makes you so sure? <laughs> are you How sure? is that better? And I said, are oh you sure God. that we are humans? And oh he man. did like a double take. I said, no, I'm joking. <laughs> <laughs> I'm joking. Because <laughs> I didn't know he terrorized to abandon us. Yeah, but like, <laughs> just for fun. So yeah, my, our, our, our point here is, if you ever visit Singapore, don't get into a car with us. Or don't get <laughs> in a car with Kyle, that's for sure. <laughs> no, no, don't, 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 don't get an Uber from a cemetery. Yeah, I, yeah. I think that's a pretty good rule of thumb, to be fair. Oh, yeah. yeah. I would um, like to visit Singapore. Oh yeah, yeah. Let us know when yeah. you're here. You know, like you'll yeah, show yeah. you around. We bring you to the creepy places. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, <laughs> yeah. There's, there's quite a few of those creepy places. Because I had a friend um, who moved here from the UK, and he was fascinated by the horror culture down here. Um, oh, cool. Yeah, he used to. He he was a, he was a colleague of mine, and he used to ask like, "Oh, can we go to this place that's like really haunted?" <laughs> and I was like, "No, no, <laughs> hell no! You you just moved here, and you have kids. You want to no. tempt <laughs> the, the, yeah. the ghosts or whatever." <laughs> but like, oh, I mean, wow. si- since we're, we're we're talking about the Asian region now, any stories from a- any more stories from the UK before like we ask um, you about stories of Japan? Yeah. I mean, I, there's a couple, uh, but I think the ones in Japan are probably a bit more interesting. There, okay, all right. I had this one, actually, the, in the UK, I had this one friend who, it's, this is just the weirdest thing I can, I can barely believe it even happened. Like, he stayed over our house for a sleepover, me and about four other friends, we're all just messing around. And then he, he decides to tell us, like, oh, I have an imaginary friend. And I was like, man, you're... He's 16. What's going on? <laughs> and I was like, you, you know, nice. and I was like, okay. And he, he, he said like, oh, he can do things. And if you want, I could make him do things. So I was like, uh, it's like about 1 a.m. in the dark. You're talking about some imaginary person who can do things. What kind of things do you mean? He's like, well, I can make those lights flicker. Oh, I was like, hell? no way, no way. Shut up. No way. You can. And honestly, he, he he said just just wait wait with me a minute i can do this i'll just mm. speak to the imaginary friend and the imaginary friend is called bit bit and i don't know what wow. that is that's just some weird name he called it when he was younger and i was like okay what's what's going on now he's like oh you know bit bit is just by the door he's not going to do anything yet i was like okay so only this one guy can see something that we can it's like bit bits just stood next to jake there he's just looking at him he's just staring at him you know he said, Jake's okay, but Bit's not going to do anything yet. And he's like, what's going on now? He's like, oh, Bit Bit's just climbing up the walls. He's, he's getting onto oh. the ceiling. And watch this, the lights are going to move. And then they actually did. I swear to God. It might just oh be perfect God. coincidence. It might be the perfectest coincidence. But the way that kid was just telling the story about he had an imaginary friend called Bit Bit who was walking around our house and just staring at us and stuff. That was creepy enough. But when the lights did something, 
I was like, okay, let's say goodbye to Bit Bit. We're not playing with him anymore. <laughs> so that that really creeped me out. That was are a weird still, little UK one. Are you still friends with him? Yeah, I'm still in touch with him. Yeah, I'm still okay. in touch with him. He so he actually he, um, sold me this laptop. So if anything oh, weird happens, oh good. <laughs> he, 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 is he still in contact with Bit Bit? Yeah. I don't know. I d- I haven't talked to him about Bit Bit for a while. Maybe I'll. Uh, mm. I'll try yeah, that. I'll see, I'll see if I can <laughs> find it, out. Yeah, he's up the ceiling. He's yeah. flying. <laughs> he's, on his, he's on his way to Singapore. <laughs> <laughs> who, who do you think offers you tech support? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's so good. Nice. Yeah, yeah. Oh, yeah but that, that was pretty much all the weird stuff in the UK. I mean, my, my dad and my, my dad and my brother and my sister and my mum will have their own stories, but mm. there was... Oh, yeah, my dad's got a good one, which is around exactly where i live i can see the place from the window just like i was saying about that translation thing i can actually see this place from the wind from my window Mm. um when he was going out with my mum when they were younger Mm. she was about 17 and he was around that age as well he he used to worry about her walking home at night and in our area there's these huge stone steps and they are really really long but at night time back in the 70s there wasn't um any light on those stone steps so a person was waiting on them steps for a woman to come down so he could attack them so basically that was all over our news at at the time and my dad would always walk my mum home down the stone steps and all like that one one night he was going to see her quite late and he comes down these big stone steps and he sees a guy there stood on the steps and he's like ah i found this guy he's like what are you doing here and the man's like nothing nothing i promise and yeah my dad <laughs> uh, he did something to that guy but yeah yeah that that was weird just to think that there's somebody like in our area so close mm. to where they live just waiting for their chance that, that used to creep me out when i heard that as a kid i was yeah. like is he still there and he's like no he's probably gone <laughs> i mean when i hear these kind of stories right i feel it is is terrifying but when you're mm. when you're there, I, I mean, I I've, I've been to London. You you the fear gets taken out. I don't know why. Is it because you're a tourist? Mm. Uh, maybe you can talk more about that about your time in Japan. But yeah. when I was in London, I I remember going to a house party with oh, uh, yeah. with a friend, and then we walked like a good twenty minutes from our Airbnb to that place. Wow. Uh. It, I mean, it was evening. It wasn't that dark. There were still people around, but it was like we had to cut through like a, like like the overhead bridge of for, of a train track, and we had to go through like a little bit of woods. But when we went home, it was three a.m. Wow. Both of us were pretty drunk, and then we walked home. At three a.m. Through yeah, the in London. In London. Uh, I I know, I know. It's really dumb. I should have. Probably should have called an Uber, but I mean, I I, I don't know. Maybe being tourists, no, yeah, yeah. Kind of stupid. I, but that probably wouldn't have been like a good idea. I I'm quite sure it's not the tourist side of things. It's the fact that you were drunk, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> because I I did the exact same thing in London. Yeah. Oh god, I, yeah. I I don't know why. I mean, I sh- I probably shouldn't have done it, but like uh, at that point, I wasn't afraid. I was more like, eh, the weather's yeah, right. pretty nice. <laughs> 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 no, but oh, your, like, cool. your dad's story kind of reminds me of like not a not a supernatural story that I had. Like I was visiting a friend in um, I think it was Texas. Uh, this was like way back in 1999, and um, I remember this will incriminate me somewhat because <laughs> <laughs> the story was that when I touched down in Texas, reports of a killer being on the loose in Texas started wow. coming up, and. Apparently, the reports after I left, the reports were like, "Oh well, you know, um, we we uh, we have reason to believe that the, that the killer has left Texas at this point in time." Um, so immediately, like my friend was like, "It wasn't you, right?" I was like, "No, <laughs> I, no." Um, but what was, like talking about your dad's story where he saw the guy just breathing on there? I remember there was hmm. once where um, me, my friend, and his girlfriend at the time were driving through like a very suburban neighborhood and as we were driving through it's empty and there's just like the street lights um not terribly well lit but well lit enough that if you're walking down there you can kind of just see where you're going and right. we pass by this we turned the corner and we passed by this one street light and there was this guy just standing 
in the light. Mm. Oh. And as we drove by, he just, like, he didn't move. He just stood down there. And this is like 10 at night. And there's nobody else around. He's just standing around and he watches us as the car goes by. And he's like, just, uh, yeah, that's creepy. Yeah. My friend and I were like, do you think that was him? I was like, well, yeah. I don't want to find out. So let's just keep <laughs> moving. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that would have been weird. Yeah. But, like, I mean, we've asked, we've asked this of, um, other guests who are like true crime podcasts and everything. And like, since you brought up that, that story about your dad and all that, it, what, you said that your dad is more terrified of people than he is of the supernatural. What about you? Like, what do you find more scary? Oh, ghosts yeah. or terrible human beings? It's so close for me <laughs> <laughs> because you know, um, sometimes I can trick myself into believing that like, there's a spirit around me, even though there might not be. But I yeah. can't trick myself to think that humans aren't that evil. You know. Yeah. <laughs> that's yeah. the only thing it might my imagination can run wild but if i see somebody with a knife or something oh god it's like yeah sometimes for me humans are the worst yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, I, I love how that's like the that I, i'm quite sure that's a consensus of everybody who we've asked that question to because yeah. everybody was like you know even if ghosts were real some of them might be nice yeah yeah, it could but, be, yeah 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 but yeah i mean like um now now <laughs> let's let's move on to japan because okay. you've told us yep. some of like oh, the, the yeah. stuff that's happened mm. in the uk but what about japan yeah. um in japan there's been tons of stuff i mean i have uh i've got a couple of personal stories from japan i've done some on my channel about it yeah um i'll try and think of well i really liked urban exploring mm. And I found a rundown house near where I lived, and mm. I used to go there. I don't know why. It was probably like you were saying earlier. That there's like no fear when you're abroad sometimes. <laughs> yeah. So I once I found this house, I I went in there with my friends once. They were like, oh, "Let's get out of here." So I went back by myself. I wanted to go when it was when it was dark as well. So you know the oh Japanese police are pretty tricky customers, so you don't want to annoy them. So I was like, "I gotta make sure I, nobody's gonna see me." I know. I'll get up at four in the morning and go there <laughs> so i went in there by myself and looked around there's it's been abandoned for years it's just covered in dust thick thick dust and the mm. tv you know there's, there's clothes there's a tv in there there's personal possessions everywhere it's like somebody just disappeared and on the walls there was um sort of like uh all the accolades and awards this guy has one and I was trying my best to read them and I could see that he was some sort of good person in society he'd done some things for his area so it makes no sense why this house is completely empty it's a really old looking house hmm. and I got loads of pictures of it and stuff and uh it it just fascinated me um so I went I went and looked around there was there's a few strange things in that house but they're all upstairs and there was a closet and in front of the closet there was all these one yen coins like mm. and they're silver so they uh, i'm saying like not just like a a little pile there was about a hundred and they were just all placed leading up to the closet door you know like a door and then Ooh. on the inside of the door i opened it i i'm an idiot so i was like i need to find out what's in there yeah. <laughs> On the inside of the door, I got pictures of this as well. I can share if any needs to be. But there was scratches on the inside of something, big, big scratches. And then there was like a cup filled with this dark looking oil. And in the cup was a five yen coin. And I don't know what it means. I've been struggling for years to find anybody who knows what it means. I ask every Japanese person I meet, can you explain this, please? And they can't. But that was one really weird thing I couldn't understand. But the other thing was, um, in that house, like I said, there was loads of dusty pictures and, and uh, oh, like this guy's awards and all his personal possessions. But there was one new photo that was framed and it was like of a child's drawing. And it was it was new. Somebody had put it in there on purpose and it's not, not a speck of dust on it. And it, it that was just for me, like, why is that there? And what's going on with all this coins leading up to the door? What happened in that closet? What are they trying to do with the coins? They're trying to do some kind of 
Ouija board summoning ritual thing. I don't know. Like it's somebody's mess. Somebody's going in there late at night doing something that I don't really understand, and that creeps me out. <laughs> oh God. Yeah, um, it was it was really weird. Did anything happen in there? Yeah, um, I something did. Um, I my sister was like, oh, like she had a friend with her, and she's like, oh, please show us that creepy house. Show us that creepy house. I was like, no, it's late. I don't like going in there. It's a bit weird. <laughs> So she, I got a video of this. I'm going to put on my channel at one point, maybe when I get to like ten thousand one day or something. Awesome, it'd be quite cool. And they are, I'm. You can just see my point of view. I'm shining my torch over everything. I'm looking around, trying to find. I'm saying like, this is the stuff. All that stuff mm. I mentioned. I go up to the uh, upstairs, and as I'm looking around, talking about the coins, talking about that new picture. I, mm. I heard this noise. It might be audible on the video, but it, it was just like a <sighs> right, right yeah. behind me. And I was like, no, 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 no. I ran, literally nearly fell down the stairs because it felt like something was right behind me. I was like, oh, get the hell out of there. I, I didn't really go back since because I was like, okay, I tested my luck in that place. You, you were alone, right? Yeah, yeah. You were, got, so, so you did the video for your sister to see? To, to yeah, see. just so she could show her friends, like, oh, he's my brother's this, in Japan. This was like stuff. your third, was it your third uh, visit to the place? Yeah, or fourth, third or fourth. Oh yeah. my god, yeah. <laughs> that's really creepy. <laughs> the, I, it's weird. The, the takeaway I'm, I'm getting from this is that you're a very good older brother. Yeah, yeah you, you are. <laughs> because like, already when you were kids, weird mm. thing outside your window and then now you're like oh well i'll go to that terrifying place one more time because my sister asked yeah so i yeah. guess that's a positive you can take out of this <laughs> i mean like did did you ever find out like what was the history behind it please? yeah no i um i kept trying to ask because right basically opposite was a i think it was a 7-eleven or a family mart like a right. convenience store yeah and i would go in there all the time just hoping to see a different worker in there. Mm. And I'd ask the first person I meet, do you know what happened with that house? Why is it abandoned? And then the next time, if I found a different worker, I'd do it. But they they all, like, they had like a rehearsed script, basically. Every time I asked, they were like, oh, no, no, we don't know anything about that house. We don't know oh. why it's abandoned. We, we can't tell you anything. It's like, okay, everybody's saying that. Somebody must know if you've worked here every day. That house is like right across the street. What What, what happened? So I don't know. They just don't. They don't want to talk about it. I even went to a local bar, and I was like, hey, "You guys know about that house?" And they're like, "Oh, no, 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 don't know about it." I was like, you know about it. You just don't want to tell me about it. it is, it's, <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah. it's pretty, pretty Japanese society. Yeah, thing, yeah. Right? yeah. Like you just Absolutely. don't. You keep your nose to yourself. You know. Yeah. You yeah. don't get in up, up into other people's business. I which, think so. Which I can, which I can understand. But then, but then again, it's like, yeah, like when you're doing urban exploration, I did quite a bit of urban exploration during my time, right? So yeah. I get, you you want to know, right? Like, what the Yeah, hell? yeah. Absolutely. It drove me crazy. Still does. <laughs> so, <laughs> so like, speaking of, like, urban exploration, right? Like, uh, you've... Is this the only place that you've urban explored in Japan? Um, pretty much, yeah. It's a bit, yeah. Oh, well, I managed to get into the sewers in Japan. Wow. <laughs> oh, that, I don't know why we all just did that. Um, nice. It wasn't that fun. We had to turn around pretty quickly, <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. and it smelled. And then the other thing was, I got on top of the university building, mm -hmm. right at the top. Like it, it was so high up, and we were messing around trying to hang off the end of it, and it was mm. it was a oh, bad idea. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah there, so, so I so, stopped messing around with heights after that day. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. How, well, how how is it like like you know like. You spend a bit. You spend quite a bit of time in Japan, and you explore an actual abandoned place, right? Yeah. Would you ever live <laughs> in one of those abandoned homes? You know, like Japan is doing this whole like you can buy yeah. abandoned homes for like really yeah. cheap. Would you ever yeah, do yeah. that? Yeah. Um. You can buy homes with history. Yeah. For for really cheap. Yeah, yeah I probably no. would. Yeah. 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 They call it Jiko Buken. They they are yeah. the homes with the history where they say something happened in there. There's a really good website for that where you can find like a little map of Japan yeah. and it will give you a it's yeah. Oshima Teru or Oshimarando. Uh, yeah. And it it will 
show you what <laughs> happens there. And it, like, I was searching it. I was like, okay, let's see if anything happened in the mall. And then you're like, yeah, somebody jumped off the mall into inside the mall down three floors. Yeah, that's why this place is said to be like having spirits in it and stuff. And then you find another one. It's like, yeah, somebody did arson attack there. Like, uh. oh <laughs> so you're just looking around my little neighborhood trying to find out what happened with that house. But it wasn't one on there, so I couldn't find out. That, I think that makes it even more terrifying. Like, the fact <laughs> yeah. that, you know, you have you have a resource here where it goes, yeah, so this happened at this mall and then that yeah. happened here and yeah. everything. And it's 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 kind of glaring how that house just does not have that listing as well. Because yeah, I was gonna ask yeah. that, like, did you did you go and did you go and check to see what happened at that place on yeah. the site? And like, oh man. Nothing, nothing. I did go back um last November. It's the place is still there. Oh, it still God. hasn't been demolished. So that's about I don't know how many years it's been now abandoned, but somebody is using it to park like um vehicles so i couldn't go right. in it that time but i think I, if next time i go back to japan i'll go to that place again and maybe i'll i'll give it a try see if is i can it, get in there one the, more time is it saitama was it in- it's saitama yeah it's in a higashi kawaguchi that's where it is mm, okay yeah i see yeah well you do not have to have you do not need to make a video for us i'm just saying that right now but I, i'm i'm really curious about like the yeah. the one yen yeah. thing and then the yeah yeah yen. i can probably a, send you yeah yeah you should you, but you probably a, a curse i if, yeah um, with my understanding of the supernatural is probably some form of curse i'm actually I more curious so. about the claw marks did, did you take a photo mm. of the claw marks as well i think i got one yeah oh, if not God, it's probably on that video yeah yeah, it's, it sounds great. My hair is standing like yeah. <laughs> it's from the inside, right? Inside, yeah, inside. Uh, yeah. Um, I, I wanted to ask this earlier when you asked the staff at the convenience store about that place and they told you, Oh, we don't talk about it. Did they smile very politely at you when they said it? As well? uh, they're, they're doing a bit like I am now. They had the you could just see the eyes, and it was uh, just the mask, like, Oh, we don't talk about it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Nice, yeah. I do, dude. I will keep going back and I will keep asking because I, I love to visit that area because that's where I used to live. So mm. I had a nice, there's a bar in that area and, you know, some cool places to do karaoke and mm. stuff. So I always go there. Mm. So I'll see if I can ask some different people, what's yeah. going on over there? Tell us. <laughs> and like yeah. the, the vibe around the area, th- does it give you that creepy vibe as well? Or is it just that one place? It's just that one place. I mean, I can understand if there's a few other places abandoned, but I can't mm. see any others. Just that one place, right by a main busy road as well. So you, oh, people wow. must be driving past it for years, thinking, "Why is that still there?" Yeah. Maybe it's something to do with they can't sell the land because they don't know where the person who owns it is, or ah, something, yeah. or that his family refused to sell it until he comes back. I, I don't know, but it's if that's the case, then they would have shut everything up so people can't go in there and they would have maybe taken his possessions out and not let them go all damaged and stuff so i don't know there's something going on with that place nobody wants it they don't want to touch it (laughs) yeah i'm sure like like Mm. um it's quite a common occurrence in japan Mm. where it's like an intersection of like really busy street and then you can see like just one random abandoned house like my last trip to nagoya like this year right i saw quite a few abandoned houses they were just abandoned right next to a combini. And then you're just walking, drinking. A yeah. Concert. Is that place abandoned? Yeah, it looks abandoned. I saw an entire apartment plaza abandoned. Wow. Just for no reason abandoned. And I was like taking pictures. Then was this like there was this salary man who's like smoking and then he's judging me. So this, this guy this, he's like, no, I just, I got to get this. <laughs> salary man's like, oh, that place. Like, I got to yeah. get this. Oh yeah, so <laughs> I'm pretty sure one of the first Airbnbs that I've stayed in, uh, in one of my earlier trips to Japan, was a murder house. Pretty oh. sure because when I checked in, I checked in really late. I checked in at nine p.m. Right, and then it was one of those corner units. It's one of the. It looked like a scene from Dark Water, like the mm. horror film. Oh movie. yeah, Dark at one. the corner doesn't matter, right? Then you know how like Japan how apartments they have double doors. Yeah. Open yeah. the first door. Okay, it looks fine. The second door was a frosted glass door. Mm. I should have seen that there was a huge crack on the glass. And then it, ah. and that apartment had clearly almost no windows. And I had wow. like this really icky vibe to that place. I was mm. like, oh, it felt off. 
like but i have no place to go because i just reached japan so i'm just gonna stay and i'm i, I changed airbnb the next day yeah, yeah but i yeah. felt really weird about it oh. i mean i wasn't alone now but like i i felt really weird uh at that but and it, it just didn't have a good feeling i don't know like <laughs> probably yeah, over the place <laughs> Uh, there was, like, yeah. Oh, sorry. oh no, I just remembered one other little short one about in Japan. Um, in Nagoya, actually, when I was mm. uh, staying in this student dormitory place, um, behind our student dorm was just this huge hill and a cemetery. That was it. Oh, and I was like, lovely. great, yeah. <laughs> so lovely. I was I was there hoping like, oh yeah, something creepy is going to happen. You know, I'm ready to hear it. But other people said they started hearing little things and I was like, mm, it's kind of interesting. What's going on? Like somebody's knocking at the door late at night or somebody tries to open the door late at night. And I was like, okay, that's cool. I wonder if it's true or, you know, lots of students in here, maybe they get the wrong door or something. And I was uh, sleeping in my room and at about 7 a.m., Somebody tried to open my door really forcefully, like ka ding, ka ding, ka ding. And I asked about it, and other people have said that there was like a young girl going around trying to open the doors at one point. So I don't know if that's something to do with the hill behind with all the cemetery stuff on it, but it was really weird because I thought, is that just, you know, maybe something you know, mistaking their apartment for mm. somebody else? But people have said that there was somebody trying to get in or some of the rooms and i was just quite glad i left mine locked yeah <laughs> did anybody see the did anybody see the actual girl that was trying to get into the rooms yeah they said well one one of the people said she was about 15 or something right and so I'm assuming not, nobody recognized her no nobody recognized her so they thought maybe right yeah so you have yeah. to be above 15 definitely. yeah yeah she's just you could get in from the street. All you have to do is just walk up the stairs and then you'd be in front of somebody's house, like the yeah. apartments. So I don't know. Maybe it was something they did. Maybe that girl knows when the students aren't there and looking for something left behind. I don't know. Yeah. Well, well, so your, your, that apartment that you stay in was in direct view of the cemetery. I couldn't see it. It was I was facing the road, and the cemetery was behind on a big oh, hill, so it was oh. quite far. Yeah, but were there any there. units that could, could that could like see it? Um, no, I think that was quite just an isolated place at the top of the hill. Mm. That was it. But we went up there quite often at nighttime, and it was. Uh, I I don't know. I I was like <laughs> I wanted to go up. The, I wanted to find somewhere to read one of my books or something so i was like i'll just go up there <laughs> so, so you went up like. to cemetery to read a book yeah yeah nice. i was reading stephen king something you know nice. <laughs> like, yeah, let's go up there nice. i was like this is a true blue a... horror creator man <laughs> yeah <laughs> I... I see I was gonna ask, like, oh, was, was it like a horror book or just something nice? <laughs> yeah, he went with Stephen yeah. King. Yeah, yeah. Which, which well, one though? It was um, Salem's Lot. So it was. Oh all my god! You went yeah. with Salem's Lot. <laughs> <laughs> so I thought I'll try. I'll see how many pages I can do in a really creepy location. I think I got seven pages, and I was like, "That's it. I'm out of here." <laughs> Were you alone? Yeah. Yeah. Nice. I mean, yeah. that that in this case, I at least understand because. You know, you, you don't want anybody interrupting you while you're reading. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so yeah. at the very least, that I understand. <laughs> Everything else, I'm like, no. Nice. I, I I've <laughs> got to say that I I I think you are definitely a lot more braver than me. <laughs> oh, you no. went urban exploration alone. I've only done it a couple of times, and I did it in the day, and I got creeped out. Like going to yeah. abandoned locations in the day is really creepy. Now he did it yeah. at night, but he had someone sigh. <laughs> into his back. <laughs> well, I, I've never read a book in a cemetery as well, so you know you definitely have that one up on us. <laughs> but with with that urban, both of these times, I was living near them for long enough periods where I was like getting used to it. So uh -huh. if I was just visiting, there's no way I would have done any of that. It's only because I lived near them both I got a little bit more brave. <laughs> fair, enough, fair enough. Yeah. Awesome. So I mean. Right now, we normally for date there, we do have some questions from our fans for you oh, specifically. Awesome. Mm -hmm. Thank so you. Uh, let's jump into some of them. So um, let me see. I, I'm going to butcher the Sangmi, Sangmi Mitra Singh asked on Instagram. Cool. What does a real ghost look like for you? <laughs> <laughs> for me, um, wow. I. 
I haven't really fully seen like a proper proper ghost. I think they are like I don't know. Sometimes for me, I, it could be you can't even see them. You know, mm. like it's a it's a fee. Sometimes it's even a feeling like like you had in the Airbnb. I I, yeah. I used to have a one of my best friends was uh, from Thailand, and he he used to, it explained to me when I was younger about um ghosts over there it's like it's not like you're gonna see some ghost jump out at you you're gonna start mm. getting sick you're gonna start getting headaches you're gonna start mm. feeling like your body doesn't want you to be around this kind of spirit so not not always you can see it but i don't know it in my head ghosts are kind of like shadows or like something you half see off out of the corner of your eye like the shadows back over behind me <laughs> you know, uh, nice. you know i i would Maybe my brain can't comprehend how scary it could be to see a ghost. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, yeah. But have you ever seen anything that could be yeah, remotely Possibly. like shadows or? Um, not exactly. No. Uh, to be honest, my brother says he has. So I do believe in it. I, I haven't really seen anything. Oh, no. Yes, I have. Ah, I completely forgot about this until now. You... Okay, cool. <laughs> let's go. Okay, this one, I was walking home from my friend's house really late at night. This is in, in the UK. Yeah. And uh, my hometown's famous for helicopter production. And we have a lot of like runway long parts of land where it's just dedicated mm. to helicopter development. So at nighttime, it's pretty quiet and it feels open. The easiest way to get back from my friend's house was to walk through one of these walk through an empty field and then you'd come mm. out by the helicopter place right. and I, I left his house at about 2 a.m and on the way back I thought you know it's a Sunday night because I had the next day off work and so did he nobody's on the streets nobody's going to be driving around a helicopter area nobody's going to be walking around a helicopter area and I was walking along listening to my music just chilling out and i saw somebody step out into the road ahead of me and Ooh. just wait in the dark and i was like oh my god and it's the only i can't go back i have to go that way to get home so i phoned my friend and i was like there's somebody here i was going to stay on the phone with you if anything happens then you know you know where i am and i walked around that place and there's nobody anywhere nearby there's and I know what I saw. I definitely saw a shadowy figure sort of step from the pavement off into the middle of the road and just kind of wait there. But I walked around the road listening. I was really like terrified. So all my senses were alert. Yeah. I don't know where that thing went, it, it, but it was there. So that is probably the closest thing I've got to a ghost experience. I don't understand how you forgot that. Right? <laughs> I pushed that, that one down. That I think is, that, was, that yeah. one scared me. Yeah, that, that is. That. Was was it? Did, did you see features or was it too dark? Just just a full shadow, just full human shadow. But yeah, I probably should have seen features because the light was right. uh, behind me, kind right. of, and then the the gap between the street lights. So you got one over there, one over oh, there, okay. about right. right in the middle here, where it's the darkest. I should have seen at least something from either side but it's just a solid but black yeah. so basically uh it's solid black it's supposed yeah. to have features but it's solid black. so you basically saw a shadow figure yeah i think so yeah and, and really like no hair either just real smooth everything then yeah. how did you like navigate the way for me yeah, i was just I'll... like I, I said to my friend right i'm on the phone i'm gonna look around for this guy he might be still around here somewhere and i was like just keep talking to me and i'll I was making out like, yeah, you'll come pick me up in two minutes. Yeah, you'll be right here. Yeah, you and about 10 guys, right? Yeah, so all right. Yeah, no problem. No problem. We're going to be fine. Yeah, so I was making all this, trying to say all this stuff. And I had my keys in my hand ready to, if I had to, whatever. <laughs> and yeah. then I, kept, I was walking around because I was trying to find this person as well. And, you know, just figure out what was going on. But I couldn't see him. And there's no, no way that person just disappeared because you yeah. couldn't. I would have heard something like the yeah he could have only gone into the uh like down some kind of rocky steps into a field mm -hmm. then you'd hit the grass is really high in that field so you'd hear him move around in there and yeah. the other way was the helicopter area and that's all fenced off by like chain link fence so there's no no way you just uh 
and nothing but a long stretch one way and long stretch behind as well. So, so you, you had to go past him. me. So you yeah, because I I couldn't. My other choice was going into the back into the like the field, yeah. and I wouldn't be able to run very fast if I was in the high grass. So I was thinking that's my only choice is to go past this person to get home. Mm. But then, but then when you walk towards this this thing, right, it disappeared, basically. It it kind of disappeared when I mm. saw it. So it go it steps in front of me like that and kind of waits. And then in that moment, it's waiting. I'm like, God. And then I get my phone out, and then I don't know where it went after that. So maybe okay. it. I just felt like somebody was hiding ah, in the shadows. Yeah. So it's just it's just like that when you know. Yeah. Man. Oh man. So at that yeah. point. Was it supernatural to you when when you were at that in that moment? Was it supernatural to you? In that moment, I was thinking, "There's a guy out here, and I'm okay. about to get oh. robbed." <laughs> okay. So I'm making up all this stuff on the phone, and I'm trying to I'm trying to think of all the ways I can get out of this situation. But later, when it dawned on me that person just disappeared, I just thought, "Okay, maybe that wasn't a person. Then maybe that was yeah. someone else." Yeah. My completely not serious theory is it's the guy from the steps that your dad confronted. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And after all, all this time, yeah, yeah, he's like, after all this time, oh, I'm gonna get that guy's son. And he, yeah, he uh, at that last minute, he just thought to himself, well, if that guy could beat the crap out of me, <laughs> I wonder what he well, said. You know what? I'm just gonna leave. Yeah, yeah. or maybe yeah. it was a uh, bit bit. Oh, <laughs> oh, maybe it oh. Wasn't. wait. So, 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 uh, have you went back to that road ever since then? Have you? I go past that road every because I work in that helicopter company. I see that oh, all man. the time. Yeah, oh, I could probably, man. I could probably get a photo of it pretty soon. Uh, no, show but you like, exactly what do you I still mean. walk? Would you still walk there? I mean, like, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, it was it was just outside of the grounds where where I work. It was on like the street you drive down to enter the company. Right. So oh, it was. Okay. Yeah, if it was inside, I don't know what it'd be a d- bit different. But yeah, did something happen there? I mean, like, did you ever find out like what what something um, happened there? I mean, I I'm not sure exactly on that stretch of land, but that in the past, maybe before it was what it is now, maybe there is something. I could look into the history of my town. Maybe there was mm. something going on there. That's because that's really creepy. Mm, yeah, yeah like, really that's weird. that's like shadow. Uh, there's a classification for that kind of thing. It's called shadow people. Yeah, it's scary as crap. Is yeah, I've, I, is, I've <laughs> seen, I've seen like that yeah. before. Yeah, yeah. I mean, oh like, yeah. It, it's not. It's not like not as detailed as yours. Mine was like you know you just look towards that there. I think it was on mm-hmm. the shoot at night. Mm-hmm. Look towards there, and then there was something like something standing, and then I, I was like, I did a double take, and it went went missing. But I wasn't mm-hmm. afraid because there was like twenty people, so I was yeah. like, okay, this is weird. But like, uh, whatever. We are in the middle of nowhere. There's definitely spirits, <laughs> so I'm not gonna care. And because there's twenty people, so I'm not I'm not gonna go <laughs> there. <laughs> and, and That's cool. We're all on a tight deadline as well, so you know, mm. shoot schedules don't don't stop for. You gotta keep schedule. going. And you yeah. you gotta keep going. That's okay. cool. I so, mean, well, b- before we get to another yeah. fair question, I just wanted to ask, like, when you were in Japan and, you know, clearly you're going to abandoned places. So I imagine <laughs> your friends in Japan knew the, this this guy might be interested in, in a particular uh, uh, um, in a particular hobby that might be a little bit dangerous. Did anybody hmm. tell you, like, any, um, any, pre- any, like, precautions you could take against, like, the supernatural or stuff like yeah. that? Yeah. Um... Well, yeah, I think somebody said having salt outside my mm. apartment and stuff like that. And yep. uh, when it, when you go into these places, you have to kind of introduce yourself at first. Yeah. Yeah. And say that you don't want to cause any trouble or anything. Mm. You're just yeah, taking yeah. a look. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. And then they always said, like, when you go to the shrine afterwards and just trying to purify, ah. you know, do something like that. Which was handy because there's a shrine on every street in Japan. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But did you uh, follow? <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah. Did you do the 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 the, the declaration like I'm entering now? I mean, yeah, now. yeah. You kind of say. Do you do it in, in Jap- 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 Japanese? Yeah, I. Wow. Like, o- or or something like that. Sorry for oh. entering. Yeah. And uh, I would just you'd say it internally more than you would say it mm, out loud. Yeah, so yeah. you just kind of give him a, a minute and then just go on in. Yeah, but mm. sometimes I forgot. <laughs> yeah. 
Actually, it's quite yeah. similar to what we do in Singapore. I, w- I was just yeah. about to say the exact same thing. Because, yeah. like, mm. um, we have... The, there's the rule about entering hotels as well, yeah, where yeah. you're supposed to knock. Did you, you know about the, the, the this thing? Like, uh, oh, no. it's, it's, it's very ingrained in, ingrained in Asian culture. You can ask yeah. your, your, your Thai best friend. Yeah. Uh, probably will tell you. So, like, when we go to hotels, because hotels, they are very dark. There's no, there's literally no uh, light entering most of the hotels most of the time. So it's dark, and uh, right. people die in them, unfortunately. And hmm. uh, a lot of times in the year they are unoccupied, so there is a lot of uh, negative energy, and spirits can stay there. And spirits tend to stay in abandoned, abandoned or empty locations after a long time. Wow. So what we would do when we check into hotels, Asians. We will probably knock on the door and then we if you're extremely, extremely superstitious, you will probably say, say Oh, I'm I'm sorry to disturb you. I'm gonna stay here for a couple of nights, just leave me be. Uh, I'll get out of your way when I check out. Something like that. Yeah, like, that's it's nice, very yeah. similar, but hmm. for hotels. Specifically yeah. for hotels. No, but even yeah. like like what you were saying, like uh just introduce yourself and and like hmm. almost make it clear that you're not there to, to cause any trouble and everything. Like even when, because um, uh, in, in Singapore, a lot uh, a lot of the guys have to do national service, which is like a two year mandatory army stint. And you know, when, when you're out in like jungles and stuff like that, and especially in Southeast Asia, where it, the more forested areas are always like, you kind of associate that with the supernatural. A lot of the times, if you need to pee, um, <laughs> The first thing you have to do is you go up to a tree or something and you just apologize. Yeah, yeah. You, no, it, right. It, yeah, yeah. It's the same thing. Like I, yeah, I don't yeah. mean like you go down there. It's like I don't mean any disrespect. Um, I just you gotta know, pee. You, I just <laughs> yeah. have to pee. So I'm really sorry and yeah. just. Well, oh, that's nice. Yeah. The the context yeah. is that because uh, the trees they 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 house spirits. Yeah. Uh, and oh. some of the grounds they were probably burial grounds. So yeah. you you're not you don't know. Yeah, especially in the jungle, whether yeah. if there's a you know there's a dead body underneath all of that uh, foliage, so so it's like a safety kind of thing. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. Interesting, interesting. Oh, that's very cool. Nice to yeah. learn something. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> it's it's it, but it's one of those things where like um, it's not just Singapore. It's it's you'll have kind of similar. Asian. I mean, different situations, it's but yeah, mostly hmm. Asian. It's yeah. mostly Southeast Asian, but like that's the thing yeah. we started. Um, this channel we started ghost maps and the channel on a whole because we love the fact that you know if you go to different parts of southeast asia a lot of the superstitions and a lot of the the creatures and spirits are very similar mm. yeah and there's like there's almost that kinship and like we kind of figured that this was true outside of southeast asia like in the greater area re- mm. the greater asian region so you know hearing stuff like this like when, when you go down there and you're supposed to be like really polite and just say like I'm sorry, I'm coming in. I do, I don't mean any harm. Yeah, it's weirdly, I guess touching is the wrong word, but it's kind of sweet to know that you know, outside yeah. of Southeast Asia, there's still kind of that connection as well. Yeah, I think so. It's it's good. It's always that's what I was taught when I was in Japan. So it's yeah. like, oh yeah, better do, better do what they say. Don't yeah. want to have any ghosts. Yeah. <laughs> so moving on to the next question, um, maybe we 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 make it. Easier. We take the easier questions first. <laughs> um, okay. Okay. Cal- Calvin is asking, uh, which episode of Ghost Map is your favorite? I'd say it was that one I mentioned earlier. The uh Bayshaw. Uh, yeah, the Bayshaw. Yeah, that was it. Yeah. That one really was just I took an afternoon off and I was just listening to uh it was after you got in contact first yeah. actually. I was just listening to a few of them. And I was like you. I had to I had to press pause for a bit because I was getting some uh, day nightmares. <laughs> <laughs> nice. and that, that was the one. Like when I got to the end of that one, I was like, okay, maybe I'll have a little break for a while. <laughs> awesome, awesome. But yeah, I, I really like it. It's great that it's on a um, Spotify as well. Mm. So yeah, it's cool to listen into some of things. And when I I watch some of your dead air stuff, and it's a real shame. I'd like to be in that studio because it looks like you guys have a real good time there, you know? <laughs> yeah, maybe the next time you're yeah, in yeah. Singapore, we could do it in person. Absolutely, yeah. But Sounds we're no good. longer at the haunted studio, unfortunately. Uh, oh. Yeah. Oh, so, you would have loved that place. You, you would, have, you would yeah. have loved that place because <laughs> it's in an office, office building that is famously haunted. Like oh, famously, cool. one of the most haunted office buildings in Singapore. 
uh, I had one experience. So I'm, I'm just going to share with you. Yeah, please. Uh, we have this thing called the Hungry Ghost Month. Mm. So it's where mm. uh, this one month, uh, the spirits of the underworld is let out to visit their loved ones. And then we will book offerings. And also um, uh, there are like spirits that have no kins that are alive or kins at all. So they are mm-hmm. hungry spirits. So people will do um, basically good stuff to you know give them offerings so that they will leave us alone, that kind of thing. So it's basically one month of that. And wow. in that one month, uh, um, even non-Chinese, we are quite respectful yeah. of that whole thing. Like like people will burn like incense paper and stuff, you know, to appease like basically offering money, like mon- burning money yeah. for them. And uh, you, you are advised not to step on it. You are advised to be go home early and you know try try just to just to keep it you know protect yourself. Yeah. So there it was one night uh, I was uh, hanging out with my f- my my studio mates. So they 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 share they have a studio right beside our studio, and uh, we went out for dinner and we came back at about ten. And because of the the office being that haunted, all the other offices are empty. Everybody leaves by wow. six. But we we we're just gonna chill. We, we wanted to play a game, you know, like, uh, and have some drinks. So I went to the toilet alone. Yeah, bad idea. And the toilet oh looks my super God. haunted. They look like one of those like really haunted toilets. But I I I mean I've been there for two years, so I'm used to it. Just before he continues, I'm just gonna set like the mood for you. <sighs> when you when you walk in when you walk in that toilet, there's three cubicles in, yeah. in the gents' toilet, and above one of the corner cubicles, the light. Constantly flickers. flickers. Yeah. Just, oh the, my God. just to give you the and, mood. And that's my favorite store. So I, I always go to that. that <laughs> that's your favorite store. Oh, yeah. <laughs> so I always go there. I do my thing, right? God. <laughs> and then as I left the toilet, I was washing my hands. So you can see the entire toilet from the uh the washing uh the wash basin. And I yeah. turned. So I saw nothing, right? Because I just you being, you know, paranoid. Mm-hmm. And yeah. The doors they will always do a little auto close because of the hinge, so they will close like halfway. So all trees oh. are halfway. Okay, so yeah. as I'm exiting the toilet, <laughs> I heard <laughs> just oh. one <laughs> right behind me. <laughs> oh man! I quick. I didn't even look. I was like, okay, I'm done. I quickly hastened yeah. my pace. I went back into my studio. My friends were getting ready to play. You know, video games. And I was like, yeah. you know what, guys? It's getting late. I'm going to go home. <laughs> <laughs> I did not say anything to them. Oh, I just packed man. my stuff and I left. <laughs> and I told them the next day. <laughs> and then and then the the, uh, the irony is because when you're operating a business in Singapore, especially mm-hmm. when you know, you're of Chinese descent, uh, we would usually do offerings for the spirits that are living in the, uh, the office building. So right. I forgot to do it for that month uh, oh. the, so you do it on the first the 15th and the, the last day of the month the first day of the month the half half point of the month and the last day of the month I forgot to do the 15th one and I told them hey, actually we, we should burn offerings for the 15th and we did uh, I think it was their way of saying hey, um, it's time to bribe us <laughs> yeah. Oh man, that would have been so creepy I can't believe that's crazy creepy. Yeah. yeah Yeah, yeah So, so and uh, to top it off like the whole office building is a long hallway. So you it's a long yeah. hallway that's like basically office suites, right? There's one unit at the very, very end. It has like doors, those double red doors like from The Shining, like oh. at the end. That one unit that is empty. Really? And apparently, somebody died in that unit. Uh. And it's been empty since then. It's super duper creepy. Yeah. Oh, and the rent like, huh? is dirt cheap. <laughs> and get good rent there yeah yeah so and you know it does help that we're doing horror so you know if if you're gonna if you're gonna rent it out to somebody well there you go yep, yeah exactly I like I like the the tonal difference between the two voices that both of you heard so like Kyle's spirit clearly is a bit younger <laughs> and a bit more yeah. enthusiastic about it yours just sighed right behind you yeah like, like <laughs> get out of here. another no, one of these guys yeah, I'd rather the sigh than the hee hee because the hee <laughs> obviously is Hints to a little girl, which yeah. you know in horror films they are extremely terrifying. Yeah, but, you know he, his dad would clearly you know as well. Yep, the, 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 <laughs> yeah. of them. The awesome. end of the bed. Yeah. Ooh. So okay, this this one is 
gonna open a can of worms, but okay. okay. TV is asking, have you ever felt mm. a ghostly experience? A ghostly at, presence. Yeah, ghostly presence as you were working on a scary story. Oh, wow. That is a good one. Um, I... Sometimes with my ones, it's very weird. Um, it's... I feel all kinds of different emotions when I'm going through some of these stories. Some of them, there was one story that really sort of got me. The way they, they, the person who wrote it, and you could just sort of feel everything they felt. I felt like there was somebody like right on my shoulder, you know, in oh. some so kind of like in the place with me. And it was a story about um, this girl who's with her parents that her parents go out doing karaoke and mm. she's uh she gets sick of being in the karaoke room with them and the parents don't want to quit yet so they she's like can i just go wait in the car then and they're out in the middle of nowhere uh because they're staying in some cabin and they had to drive down to this little bit and yeah she goes back to the car and she sees another car outside and she's like what was that car always there because she had a little nap and then she woke up and in that story she talks about how she sees someone in the seat of the car just lean forward and sort of look towards Ooh. her and um like she feels something and she hears a voice just say i hate them like that oh and it's it when i was reading that part i was like looking around me because i felt like oh god i can, I can kind of feel like i'm there and it yeah. turned out that the girl in the car was the um, daughter of the karaoke guys, uh, you know, sort of the karaoke guy yeah. and the owner of the karaoke place, sorry. And she was being attacked with by bullies so much, she ended up taking her own life in the God. car with uh, the fire. So it was God. like when she saw like some, like, like kind of like that shadow figure kind of thing, lean yeah. forward and just like, turn to them and say i hate them so much or i hate them something like that i was like okay i'm feeling something deep down here this isn't like a this isn't like a standard story today this is something a bit more profound oh, so that that's the closest i felt like whilst i've been doing one of those um i am incredibly jumpy after i've done about f five stories in a row so i guess <laughs> maybe i can work myself up a bit and feel like uh, i'm feeling something that i'm not it's only because i'm guess like i'm guessing like you two we both really, we all really like horror and we really want to get into it so much that, you know, we're right there with them believing it. And then, uh, you know, you hear a noise like, and then that's it. You're gone. <laughs> oh man. That, that, yeah. that story, that story of the, the, the daughter of the current yeah. places owner, man, that like the moment you, you start talking about like what, what drove her to it. Like that, mm. yeah, I can, I can see why that's the one where, you felt something because immediately when you're telling it, I can feel like a punch in the gut. It's not yeah. even like a presence per se, but like it's exactly like what you said, where that that sense of empathy becomes so strong. Mm. Yeah, it's yeah. Just, oh man. So, so like, uh, have have you like ever worked on your ghost stories at night, or is it like a normal thing for you to work on? Yeah. Oh, always normal. So yeah, I would do my. <laughs> I'd do my usual like day job, my helicopter work job, and then I would only have the night to work on my stories. That's, uh, so yeah, pretty much a, every what time. A, what a great way to set the mood. Like you <laughs> go past the place where the one place where you thought you saw something and then go yeah. home and write ghost stories. That's yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's just the mood, pretty right? much. Yeah. yeah. That's true. Yeah. God, yeah. <laughs> um yeah. shall we ask yeah, you, you, yeah. yeah. So mm -hmm. um I'm. I'm not. Last question. I'm not even gonna try to pronounce this person's no, name. No, from Lydia. Lydia. Okay. Okay. Cool. Um, so Lydia was asking, like, is there anything off limits when it comes to the stories you tell? Yeah, there is. There's quite a lot, actually. Um, oh, okay. And not only because YouTube has certain rules, you can't yeah. say certain things. Um, I. Be I believe that most of the rules. I, I don't want to do anything that's hurting children or animals or, yeah. you know, just, you know, standard morals of normal people. I, I won't do anything gross like that. Anything yeah. like too sexual. And there's lots mm, of stories mm. about stuff like that in Japan. Yeah, for some yeah, reason. Yeah. Any stories about um, uh, just like 
uh, domestic abuse as well. I don't do those. Mm, yeah, I don't think they really should have a place. I mean, some of them are, some of them can be so hard hitting. It, it would ruin your day to hear them, basically. Yeah, oh, and you yeah, just you just make you angry and sad, and I don't want to do that because yeah. I don't want my day ruined just as much. Yeah, <laughs> so, no, I agree. Yeah, but yeah, there's some some stuff that's kind of off limits and some of the stories i find would take so long to explain what's going on and it would take so much additional research by me to do it so i kind of lay off of those like for example if we're talking in some of my videos i put pictures in the videos to explain what, what i'm talking about like mm. you know recently i did one about uh, a jizo statue which is uh it's mm. part of the Buddhist thing in Japan where these are kind yeah. of for the, uh, ch you know, guides for the children and things like that. They, they're the kind of saints for children, basically. They mm. want us, they're protecting guardians. So I, I add that in because that helps explain the end of the story. But when I have like five different ones of those in a story, I think that people would kind of switch off and like, okay, now I've got to learn what that is and then learn what that is and then find out how that helps the story and then like, ah, uh, but yeah, some of the ones though I find in Japan are, are so funny and so obviously not true that <laughs> I was thinking of doing it for April Fool's Day, but I couldn't get around to it in time. Like, honestly, there's one I was reading the other day was about a haunted fridge that could talk or something. And I was like, that just come on. <laughs> Maybe you got drunk and talked to your fridge. I don't know. <laughs> but the, I want that one to be true. Yeah, I yeah. really do. <laughs> And then another guy was like, I saw a dragon in the toilet. And I was like, dude, how can you see that? Maybe, wow. I don't know. Wow. And then uh, one of my favorite ones was, uh, I read it quickly, is a guy was working at a convenience store and he was looking in the CCTV monitor and then looking back and he could see a crab in the CCTV, but not in real life. So ghost crab? I don't know if that's going to give people nightmares though. So I didn't do that one. <laughs> There has to yeah. okay. There has to be somebody out there that's just terrified of crabs. So I think yeah. you've, you've given them their ultimate horror story, right? Yeah. Now. <laughs> yeah. There's some language you like that. Yeah. Ghost fridge is interesting. Oh, see now I really hope that this is what's going to happen for uh, Jay Nightmare's <laughs> April Fools. Yeah. Twenty twenty four. I think uh, that will just be missed funny. it. Though. Oh, man. Uh, yeah. Have, I might do it one do day. It. Yeah, I think yeah. If it's if it sounds good to enough people, I think just go. Yeah. Hey guys, this is yeah. a bit of a silly one today. We're just so guys, yeah. if you guys want some silly horror stories <laughs> yeah. from Jay Nightmares, I think you need let to us know down in the down comments. In yeah. the comments yeah. section. Um, you. you you definitely at the very least have our vote for that. Wow, definitely. Oh, that's good. I would that's love good. a story about fridge. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's there's I've got a whole bookmarked selection of them. There's another one where a guy. <laughs> can hear a dinosaur in the woods or something. <laughs> it's like, I don't know. Wow. Which could be interesting, maybe. I didn't really read that one fully. But yeah, are, are, are your stories mostly from 4chan? Um, yeah, they are kind of re repostings and retellings. And that's the the thing. They all, they're always anonymous. I always want to find the original source of the story. But it's not so easy to... Yeah, but, I, I mean, it, I guess for, for my stories, it'd be 2chan, like Nichan. That's where mm, they, yeah. are, I think the bulk of mine come from but anybody can can find me all you have to do is just type in kawaii hanashi and then mm. about 10 million websites will appear with different stories and yeah it's it's like reddit really just thousands and thousands yeah awesome yeah so, cool. <laughs> sorry just i'm literally sitting here just thinking of it as a haunted fridge <laughs> yeah yeah I'm not going to be able to let them go for a while. Uh, yeah, I have to do that one. I've got to do it. Oh, you, you absolutely have to. Um, yeah, well, you know, you you kind of you kind of have a very interesting. Uh, you're kind of in a very interesting space for, for yeah. us as well. Where oh yeah, no, oh, yeah, see, like I'm just talking to my. I'm so engrossed here. I'm just talking to this. Um, no, but you sit in a really interesting space where, you know, you're from the UK, but you've. You've lived in Japan, so you kind of managed to straddle both worlds. And like, so we kind of wanted to ask you, from your point of view, like, what are, what do you feel are the key differences in in Western horror versus Asian horror? Mm. Like, in terms of the way the stories are told, in terms of the mm. kind of stories that they have. Yeah, yeah, that's that is tricky. Um, 
because a lot of what I like, I can find in both, you know, mm. I think it's some in, in the West, you can find some absolutely amazing ghost stories. I was yeah. raised on um, English and American and all these kind of ghost stories when I was younger. So I, yeah, something like that. I do think that um, American horror specifically in this type of stories that I find is more human orientated Mm. Uh, whereas you would be scared of stalkers, weirdos, and you know yeah. exes, and you know dating stories, things like that. There, but that's very popular, and there's a lot more of that, I think. Mm. But um, with with the Japanese stories, it's it's focused really on um, places. That's sort of where the horror begins. So it can be in a apartment, it could be in a lake, it could be somewhere where they went camping, because often at the Often at nine out of ten, every story starts the same in the Japanese ones. This happened when I was this age. That's why every one of my stories start with this happened when I was 15 years old, yeah. like that. So they set the scene usually by telling you their age, where it took place, and what is important about that place. So I did mm. one about a camping location way yeah. out in somewhere like Kyushu or somewhere like that. But it's important for them to get that going. Whereas the American ones, I feel like they can happen anywhere. Like mm. it's not it, it's not about the location that's scary. It's more about the 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 stress that's coming yeah. in the situation. Oh, so it, okay. it's one small difference, I guess. But yeah, J Japanese stories really ingrained in history. You can find a lot of historical things, mm. um, especially their ghost stories. It's always something like something happened in the place you will you you are mm. much like your story about when you checked in on that b and b place you get the vibes like that that's yeah. that that is like the start of every japanese story to be honest so yeah that that kind of thing whereas um i think with the american uh, australian and english ones they might be like oh this home has always been in our family it's like a known mm. place Whereas sometimes with the Japanese ones, it could be a completely unknown place mm. to them, but then they find yeah. out later. But yeah, it's hard hard to pick it out actually. But I like I like a lot of both. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you you obviously employ both in yeah. your stories, yeah. even though you you know most of the stories come from Japan, right? But you do yeah. employ employ the techniques because the the ones that like I mentioned that terrifies me those are the human ones mm. yeah. because i can see that happening <laughs> yeah yeah uh that's that's the ones that get me the most to be honest as well yeah yeah but a good ghost story is always is always what you want to kind of like listen to to feel spooky though if you want to if you want to feel scared you can do the human ones if you want to like a spooky vibe so i think yeah. can't be can't be a good ghost story <laughs> yeah it's definitely it, that's very interesting as well like i it never i mean I wonder whether on some level we kind of realize it, but you crystallize it very well. Where, you know, it's it. There's a greater focus on the location in, in mm. uh, yeah. Asian, Asian so, stories and the history behind the location as well. That's very interesting, actually. Yeah, even yeah. for us, like we we also ghost maps literally translate. Yeah, you know, ghost ghost maps are like it's as simple as like stories in maps, right? Yeah, and we yeah. also yeah. mark them according to location. So yeah, mm. it's very much true. Yeah. Yeah. It's cool. It's very cool what you do. Um, well, that okay. So, talking. It's interesting that you brought up um the idea of of you know the the terrifying human stories versus like the spooky feel of a ghost story and everything. So you've told like a variety of these kinds of stories. Um, what's your favorite type? So is it like the supernatural? Is it the and and what, by favorite mm. we can mean just the ones that you enjoy hearing the most, whether it terrorizes mm. you or whether it, it's it's a fun thing. Is it the supernatural? Is it the urban legends? Is it the the horrible human beings? Um, yeah, if I was listening for my to myself, I'd probably go with some of the human ones to be honest, because I mm. I want to see how. <laughs> bad people can be to each other i don't know why but I, probably because <laughs> yeah. i listen to a lot of true crime as well but yeah. yeah um i'd go with that but i i would also get tired of it quickly so i'd mm. i'd be straight onto the ghost ones afterwards it's I, it's hard to say but if the the stories i make the ones i probably enjoy that little bit more are probably the human ones where somebody like it's I did a couple of strange series like Stranger at the Door. Like, mm. th just that for me is like a blank canvas. I'd be like, oh my God, I can't wait to find out 
who has been knocking on people's doors late at night or who's trying to get in or whatever that scares the hell out of me but then sometimes mm. if i if i go like ghost stories i'll be like okay let's find some but i don't know what they could be yet so mm. it, i'm more i want to go towards the uh specific stuff a bit more sometimes like the knocking at the door weirdos like that door <laughs> just, just so you know when you were telling that story about um the the girl in the car park in the yeah. parked car i was like the way you were telling i kept staring at the, for the rest of, for the rest of this conversation that we've been having i've been like oh, okay i was gonna focus on the door, but then i just kept looking back at you and like oh okay conversation the moment you started that one immediately went back to the door i was like mm, <laughs> yep this, this is this is when he this is when jay's gonna surprise us by having something <laughs> Yeah. Oh my god, yeah. yeah. The video just ends. <laughs> Actual little girl run, run opens the door, run past, and the video just cuts. And then the video ends, I was like, what the hell, guys? Yeah. <laughs> just get, you get like all these questions from all your, from all your 9,000 plus subscribers. What the hell did you do to him? Yeah. And then your next video could be mission to the UK to find out what happened. <laughs> yeah. We need to find out the truth. And then the truth is in front of us all along is in that place in Saitama where like <laughs> yeah, you yeah. have to go back there to find hey, you <laughs> are we making a movie guys this sounds good <laughs> <laughs> sounds like a movie right right <laughs> sounds like a plot <laughs> clearly now this has to happen yeah. clearly now this has to happen we have to get a ghost fridge in there as well yeah. <laughs> oh well let you know what let's save the one for the sequel <laughs> yeah I, I'm okay, thinking yeah. I'm thinking <laughs> third movie when our franchise just starts taking a dip we're like ghost fridge, ghost fridge. Yeah. bring it back up <laughs> we bring it back <laughs> oh that's like, so good with child's play i'm quite sure like the up the up the humor by the fourth one will beat child's play by like <laughs> yeah. one movie and up the humor by the second by the third one yeah. well that's some more stuff yeah <laughs> um i mean okay so we talked a little bit about um the horror that you talking about child's play uh about the horror movies that you watched as a kid we talked a little bit about you reading stephen king in a <laughs> in a cemetery like yeah. what's your what, uh, so what's your favorite this this sounds like such a line from Scream. But what's your favorite scary <laughs> movie? What's what's your favorite like horror novel, horror comics even as well? Like, mm. What what do you really enjoy? Oh, well, some of these are going to be easier to answer than than the others. <laughs> so for for horror comics like manga, I guess my mm. favorite would be Junji Ito. Yeah, yeah. Yep. I think as he's the boss, yeah. he's got some real <laughs> yeah. real yep. good nightmarish things there. Um, really strange yeah some yep. really strange stuff. yeah really abstract kind of things i love that um i've got a bunch of different books i can i always struggle with the author's names sometimes though mm. but yeah good good stuff um also for horror books um i like uh like say salem's lot is one of my favorites um right. mm. i would say pin is another one by andrew yeah. niederman this is a very weird one uh it's about this boy and his sister who um whose parents are doctors and they they never really explained how to grow up like a father on a, and a mother would mm. they were very very factual very uh, serious doctor types so they don't have you know they don't have a sympathy like hey when you're younger your body changes right. a bit and then you you know it's okay it's natural they won't do that so what they did was they had a medical dummy uh, like a like a doll in their um in in the doctor's uh, place and then mm. when the kids wanted to ask a question about life they would go to the doll and ask it and the dad would be in the corner doing like ventriloquism going like and talking making it sound like the doll is talking Mm. and uh without ruining the book which is also a film it's a really good film as well um they they the parents get into a car accident and they lose their lives and the kids have to grow up and they think that that doll can talk and it's a real thing oh. and one of the it's a brother and sister one of the siblings goes a bit crazier believing in the doll and believing that he can still hear the doll's voice and then the other sibling is like no it was just dad trying to teach us stuff and it's like no he's real he's real and it's just a total trip into madness and that's a really good book and a really oh, good man. film that's called pin yeah mm. p-i-n because it the, 
yeah, that's a good one. What was the author's name again? Andrew Niederman, I think. Okay. Yeah. We will check yeah. it out. Well, I, I'm definitely that sounds check really out. strange, but yeah. at the same time, terrifying. Mm. Oh my yeah, God. it's a really unique one. It's lots of lots more stuff happens in that. The film's quite funny as well because it's from 1988, so it's a bit old, but a bit oh, wow. fun. Okay. Yeah. Mm. And it it probably didn't have the most biggest budget, so you know you can enjoy it. It's quite funny to watch as well, so it's quite cool. <laughs> uh, and speaking of films, I love. Um, uh, I mean, it's I'm a big fil- bit of a film nerd. I, I watch tons of them, uh, not just horror films, but lots of other ones. Um, my favorite horror film probably is Ringu, mm. and but I also like a couple of lesser known ones uh there's one called the black coat's daughter which mm. is made by osgood perkins who was the son of the guy who was in oh man it's just uh the name of that ah oh, the alfred hitchcock film psycho. norman and, yeah and psycho and why can't I, yeah why can and, i not remember that <laughs> when, when you said perkins i was like thinking yeah. to myself it is it is it who yeah. i think it is but yeah Oh, yeah, okay, the, interesting. The son of him, he made one film and that's it. And it's about these girls at a Catholic school who one of them somehow can, the devil just calls the phone and then one of them speaks to it and then it kind of gets a hold on her and she, it's like her twisted life after she speaks to the devil. And when that first, when that devil makes contact the first time, it is so creepy because I don't like things with phone calls or like you're hearing a voice down the phone. It really weirds me out. So mm. it's like, oh, 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 oh. make it always strange sounds. You're like, oh God, what's that? Yeah, that's a, that's a really, really creepy film. That's called um, The Black Coat's Daughter or it's also called February for some reason. Don't know why, okay. but um, I like, there's a really fun film if, if because we talked about Junji Ito uh, mm. Uzumaki. Have, have oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. They made that into a film. That I watched that when I was a teenager, and I found that really fun. Wow. So I, I, I like going back to that now and then. But then you've got other classics like you know, Shining. I really like Blair Witch Project as well. I thought mm. that was a good, mm. bit, good bit of fun. And, uh, yeah, The Thing. I could go on for oh. ages. Yeah, mm. Lots and lots and lots of good films. How about you guys? You got any favorites? Um, oh. I, I'll, I'll, I'll outlet win. Yeah, because my answer is clearly going to be shorter than Kyle's. Because Kyle, Kyle's going <laughs> to sit down here. He's not even going to pay attention to the conversation now. Because <laughs> he's no, but he's going to be trying to like rank them in his head. Yeah. Um, like for me, it it it's an unfortunate side effect. Because like I, like I said, my brother tricked me into watching The Exorcist when I was six. Um, <laughs> He told me it was like the Terminator, and about halfway through, <laughs> I realized he was lying. Um, but no, that that film that film stuck with me all through mm. my life. And um, I mean, you're, you're a huge film guy as well. So you, you know who Mark Komod is, the, the film reviewer? Yeah, yeah, I know him, yeah. Yeah, and like he, the way he talks about The Exorcist kind of crystallizes it, crystallizes for me what I like about it, where it's a case of, and for me, it also has to do not just with the film itself, but like my upbringing as well, because I was raised Catholic. And when I was a kid, right. watching that movie terrified the, not just when I was six, but like when I was a little bit older than mm. six and I was watching that and it terrified the crap out of me. But as I grow older and as I move away from, as I moved away from from um, the religious side of things, like I'd appreciate the film on a different level and every time I watch it, it's it feels like a, a, a different film for me. Mm. Um, right, yeah. But a different film that I just, I enjoy just as much. Um, yeah. Yeah, so it's, it's, like it, it's almost it's weirdly enough become kind of like my comfort film, because I watch mm. it and I know I'm definitely going to enjoy it, and chances are I'm going to watch it and see something else in there every single time. Yeah, that's yeah. cool. So, Exorcist, your favorite film? Um, I I horror I go, la, horror yeah, film. Yeah, in terms of horror, I go back and forth on it, but so I think it's your favorite film because you got trauma over it. <laughs> I mean, sure, we can look at it that way. <laughs> I'm not trying to be a psychologist, but like, I've, I've heard him tell this story like a lot of times. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And the every time he tells it, I, I see a different perspective of it. Yeah. Yeah. I yeah. mean, like, I really, I really like, um, I really like a lot of John Carpenter's stuff. Like, the thing, yeah. uh, Halloween is. Yeah, thing. Halloween yeah Halloween's re- big one. Yeah, it remains my favorite slasher film. Mm. Yeah, like, I think. If we look at the horror genre on a whole, I think personally the Exorcist will sit at the top three. Um, 
like if we look specifically at Asian horror, for me, it has to be Shutter. It's been Shutter. Yeah. <laughs> like I don't think anything out of of the region has ever topped that for me. Yeah. And and Shutter, it, it's still one of my favorite films, not just like horror films. Yeah. Yeah, yeah that's a, it is a good one. I need to rewatch that. Oh yeah. Yeah. Like, like, um, I, yeah. I think we had somebody once before ask us, like both of us, because they know that we like the Shutter, and we like Shutter, and they asked us, um, have you ever seen the American remake? And both of us went, what American remake? Yeah, we, yeah. American remake. I, we have no idea what you're talking like, about. Yeah. Like when people yeah. ask us the, about Ring, have you ever seen the American version? Like what yeah. American version? <laughs> There's no such thing as an American version. <laughs> the, the funny thing is, once he said that, I actually kind of forgot that there was an American remake. <laughs> there the is. Ring. There yeah, is quite a few of them. They do actually. a few, don't they? And they yeah. do a lot of them. Yeah. yeah. So for me, I, I because I'm co- because I am film. I'm a filmmaker, so I, I watch quite a variety of films. I don't just stick to one, uh, like yeah. region. But I started out watching Hong Kong horror first. Mm. So my oh, v- oh. absolute favorite Hong Kong horror is definitely Mister Vampire, the very very first one. Mister Vampire, nineteen seventy eight, yeah. I think. I, I, it's 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 got everything. It's got comedy. It's got horror. But there are certain scenes that they anchor they amp up the horror element, the, the spooky and the eeriness of it. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, American, cool. probably Evil Dead. Mm, oh, yeah. Evil Dead has a lot of heart. Like, Stressful I, film. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's low budget, but it is it's mm. pretty, yeah. Have Next you seen thing, that remake? Oh, uh, yeah. I did. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I was, I'm, eh. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It, was, it was a bit more, yeah. You know, good to see the new effects, I thought. Yeah, because yeah, they they clearly put a bit more money on it. There's a new one coming. I just watched the trailer last night. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It looks yeah. looks different. It look, it look, yeah. Looks different. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah, I don't know. There's something about B grade horror that that I really like. Mm. Yeah, yeah, there's yeah. a trend for that. Charm. Like, yeah. I really like uh, Pet Cemetery. The original yeah, same. One. Yeah, yeah. I, I there's something weird about like the shitty like <laughs> like yeah. wax human effect when they do it when they smash yeah, it or yeah. something. There's something yeah. like. Uh, amazing about that. I, th- I think it. I think it kind of ties back into what, like, um, I think Sam Raimi was the one who said it. Oh right? yeah. Um, you know, he. I mean, he was. Speci- he was specifically talking about Evil Dead, two. I think where he said that it's basically a Three Stooges movie, but with um, blood instead of custard pies. And, like <laughs> he he goes on to talk about like how um, there's that, there's almost like a very weird relationship between horror and comedy. Mm. And yeah. Yeah, I think that I think that kind of, I mean, it you can go into a lot of reasons why, but I think if 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 you like the B grade schlocky cheesy horror, um, that's it's it's probably because it entertains the crap out of you. Oh yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Like one of my Same. favorite. I mean, obviously, Ringu is one of my favorites Japanese horror, right? Yeah. But my absolute favorite that sits above Ringu is Dark Water. Because it yeah. absolutely makes no sense. <laughs> like <laughs> nobody would live in like the corner unit that's in this apartment that's super haunted. Nobody <laughs> in their right mind would. But then you look at it and in the Japanese way, like, yep, yeah, that's really entertaining. Yeah, that's I good. love that. I love that that they did it. And yeah. then she was like, Why is it dripping? <laughs> Oh I, god, yeah. I like how that's the message you took from that movie. Was, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Just yeah. choose your apartments correctly. Yeah, yeah I come mean, on. Right? Like what, what Jay said, right? Yeah. Places. <laughs> yeah. yeah, places, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so one more John, one more thing. Games. Yeah. Oh yes. Games. Oh wow, yeah. Um I'm actually not that much of a game person, but yeah, I, 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 I will I can tell you the few that I've played. Um <laughs> I played all the uh, large amount of the Pokemon games when I was younger. <laughs> that's not too scary, but they're Dif- scary. Different kind yeah. of monsters, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Um, I think I've got Resident Evil 2, but I haven't completed mm. it yet. Mm. Um, but I, I play Skyrim all the time. Mm. I like, really just like to relax walking around the big thing. You know, <laughs> there's like dragons after you and stuff. I'm like, oh, let's do that. Boom. <laughs> um, well, not too much of a horror gamer. Oh, no, I, I get uh, too scared. I honestly get too scared. I, get, I feel so stressed out playing these games. <laughs> I I mean, uh, it's, yeah, Skyrim is definitely not a horror game, but no. I mean, I see the bugs in that game. Certain, yeah, certain caves. Yeah, where they are. They yeah. have the Draugr. That is yeah, certainly creepy, right? and then they have that music and that mm. ambience, and then yeah, you, you when you because. Uh, 
I, I don't like to play like because you can choose your class, right? You can right. choose warrior or whatever. Mm. I don't like to play warriors in Skyrim specifically for that reason. Because when you run and you trigger all the enemies spawning, yeah. it's really creepy when the bunch of droppers yeah. just run towards you. <laughs> yeah. They're yeah. basically zombies. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. They have big bugs in there as well, which are horrible. Yeah. yeah. See, <laughs> see this this is what I mean when I say like a lot of our conversations are that go into places that we didn't expect. Exactly. The yeah. horror aspects of Skyrim was <laughs> on a list of things to come up with. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so as we uh end this episode, we have one question okay. that we always ask all our guests. Yeah. Okay. Wonderful. So what scares you the most? Oh, yeah, this, this can be anything. Anything for for us, both of us are we're scared of house lizards. Yeah, <laughs> it's really <laughs> stupid, but yeah. <laughs> well, um, yeah, that it's a tough question. That um, oh, yeah. I think for me, it's a a stranger like the other end of the phone. Mm. You don't know how they got your number, or they or somebody's at the door and you don't know how why they're at your door and or why they won't go away like a, some somebody doing something that I can't really understand or explain mm. like harassing that really is something that just plays on my mind yeah that that yeah. that freaks me out um especially like when you hear if you ever got like a strange voicemail message and you try and play it back and you're trying to understand what the hell was that like what yeah or if you if you like like I do sometimes, uh, record your sleeping and you play it back and you're like, what was that? I don't like weird little recordings of stuff that's happened. <laughs> oh my God. Yeah. 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 And that, that, that's a small thing that creeps me out. Um, i trying to think of if there's anything else. I, re- I don't mess around with Ouija boards and stuff like that. Mm. <laughs> yep, <laughs> that's yep, that's yep, one. Yep, yep. Anything to do with like devils and witches have, and stuff. Have you tried I don't it though? Mess- uh, yeah, I did a little bit, but not not in a house or anything. Made sure we did it outside. So yeah, I did that. I wanted to do the the Japanese Ouija board, the Kokuri San one, but uh, oh, yeah. nobody wants to play with me, so I can't. Really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, well, yeah, I'm a bit clueless about this. What's the difference between the Japanese Ouija board and like the 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 one that everybody knows? It's kind of the same principle, really. But the one, one of the things is you have to have a window open to let the spirit come in, ah, and then right. it's it's in there, and you 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 put your uh, fingers on the coin. Yeah. It's a coin this time. It has to be a certain coin, the five yen coin, uh, which was the one that was in the cupboard. By the way, maybe yep. they were doing something like that. Yep. And they disposed of it there. But uh, you move it around all the hiragana like alphabet kind of things mm. and it spells out certain stuff and yeah you have to say goodbye the right way just like yep. the western one yeah so it's it's interesting i like the aspect of having the window open to let it in yeah. there's there's another one in in japan which is one i i don't want to do which is um called hitori kakurembo which is uh hide and seek by yourself yeah mm. so basically you get like a doll you put some items inside i think it's like hair or something like that something of yours like nail clippings hair you sew the doll up with red uh thread and then you put the doll in the bathroom sink or something or in the bath and then you've got to go inside a closet turn on all the tvs in the house and then you kind of invite this thing to come in your house and apparently if you do it right you'll hear something walking around your house with like heavy footsteps looking for you so, and the doll will always move when you go back to the bathroom after the after you finish it. I, I'm thinking about doing some stories about that thing soon, so I yeah. probably will. <laughs> yeah. I, oh my god. They always have some weird ritual. It's, yeah, it's, it's, really, it's really weird. Like I, I was gonna say, just when you said hide and seek by myself, yeah, that was already creepy enough. Yeah, yeah. And the further you got into explaining it, the more I was like. <laughs> Jay, yeah, I, no. I, I look forward to the episode, but <laughs> I think that's the one I'm not going to listen to. Yeah, <laughs> like that. I've heard a variation yeah. of that. Like, uh, like uh, I think it was, I saw a horror short film, a Malaysian horror short film. Mm. Uh, oh, it's cool. called One, Two, Three. So it's a mm-hmm. variation of that. So it's also a ritualistic thing. So you play 
with a spirit hide and seek. Mm-hmm. Right. A hide and seek and tag. So at night, at 12, just before 12, you fill the bathtub to full of water. Yeah. You take a bath and then you oh. go to sleep. You close your eyes and then you, you do you do some chants and you count uh, one, two, three. And then the, then the game has started. Oh. So the, the spirit will be following you throughout the whole, uh, every day. Like it will be following you. So every time wow. you, you turn back, you can see the spirit. So you, you must not let the spirit out of your sight. And the closer the, the, the spirit is to you, the closer you are to dying. But if, no. you, if you survive, like I, I, I think if you survive like for like two days or three days, you break the yeah. curse. And, oh my god. And and then uh you can ask the spirit to give you grant a wish or something. Yeah. Oh. This is let's really terrible. <laughs> the short film is quite terrifying. Yeah, yeah it's horrible. Yeah, yeah like it, that it's, sounds it's scary. Yeah. It is, it is. Like yeah. I should watch that. Do you know the 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 there's this urban legend in Japan, Japan the toilet one, what sun that is Oh Hanako san. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. drag you into the underworld through the toilet bowl. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, that's a creepy one. They got a lot of urban legends. Yeah. Yeah. Teke Teke as well. Yeah, yeah that's okay. that's a good one. Yeah. I, I sometimes find even like lesser known ones that I've like, I've never heard this before. I've got to find out what's going on here. I <laughs> spend Ooh. ages trying to dig into it. Yeah, I'm planning on doing another urban legends one soon. Oh, awesome. Which would be cool. Yeah. We will yeah. share it once it Yeah, if you, yeah, please. It, it would be nice to involve you guys if you're interested. Oh, yeah, definitely. Oh, definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Mm. yeah. So I think with that, we also would like to say that we also collaborating with JNMS, we'll be going over to tell some urban legends from yeah. outside yes. yeah, on his channel. So please, you know, follow him, subscribe to him and support him. Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah. I'll say the same to yours when you're on my channel. Like, come on, guys, let's All see right. some ghost maps. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> thank you so much, Jay. So thank, with that, we will conclude the episode. Thank you yeah. so much for uh, coming on to our show, Jay. Uh, absolute pleasure really thank you appreciate and i enjoyed like i'm sure we can go on and on about like i think yeah yeah we I could mean, we could talk for hours couldn't we guys yeah, <laughs> yeah. um I, I i'm sure a huge chunk of ghost maps listeners already know but for anybody out there who doesn't know where to find j nightmares you want to tell us where to find you yeah yeah just uh pop j nightmares into um youtube or i'm on twitter as well I don't do much on twitter but uh it's at j nightmares 27 Mm. And that's pretty much all, we, all the places you can find me at the minute. I'm too lazy f- to do other ones. <laughs> yeah. 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 Well, it, yeah. It, yeah. We, when, you know, we, we, I was like looking to see whether there's anywhere else I could find like, yeah. um, you know, uh, uh, your stuff and everything. I was like, nope. Yep. The uh, quick Google search. That <laughs> so, covers so how often do you upload Jay? Uh, I try to upload sort of every five to six days it used to be weekly but i'm trying and trying to trying to get a bit quicker but before that it used to be monthly so nice. <laughs> maybe we'll right. get to a point when uh, i can do it like every three days or so that would be really great awesome yeah so if you guys want to listen to the same japanese horror stories that i listen to personally <laughs> mm-hmm. check him out i think some of the stories that he tell is absolutely terrifying like really scary uh. Thank yeah, you, yeah, and, and and I love I love the translation because he brings the nuances of the language. It's hard to 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 do it, and yeah, so support him. Yeah, there's some great writers out there. I just hope I did it justice sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, b- believe me, when we when we first when you know we, we got into the the weeds of ghost maps, um, like Kyle was like suggesting like horror stuff, and yours was one of the one of the things he suggested. So. Oh, us, cool. having this, us having this conversation has been a long time coming. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'd love to do it again sometime, guys. It's, it's been brilliant. Awesome, it's been good fun. Uh, it's, it's been great for us as well. Yeah. Um, so, yeah. Um, we'll do Jay, our sign out now. Yep. Yeah, thanks yeah. so much for joining us once again. Um, we're going to do the obligatory sign off now. Of course. Um, cool. New episodes of Ghost Maps go online every second and fourth Thursday of the month on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Podcasts, and all major platforms. New episodes of Dead Air go online every 13th of the month on YouTube. To make sure you never miss an episode of either, subscribe now and follow us on social media at WeAreHantu. That's one word, W-E-A-R-E-H-A-N-T-U. If you'd like to share your own stories that could inspire future episodes of Ghost Maps, you can reach us through the contact form on hantu.sg or message us directly through Facebook and Instagram. You can also be one of our supporters on Patreon at patreon.com slash WeAreHantu. And And remember, 
just, just because they're stories, stories it doesn't, doesn't mean they're, they're not true. true thank you guys thanks for thank listening you guys. Cool. Thanks, thanks so much jay. jay thank you guys speak to you again soon see you man cheers if you want to stay up to date on hantu and listen to our other podcasts like ghost maps subscribe now and follow us on social media you can also be one of our supporters on patreon look for we are hantu or click the links in the description dead air is a hantu production hosted by kaya ong and win ray with album art by Jolin lim and recorded on audio technical mics <laughs>